Good Almost. evening, folks. You are joining us for the 32 GM Live Mock Draft hosted on the Cover One Draft Network and on tonight's episode of the Greg Thompson Sports Show. We have just begun the draft. The first two picks have gone relatively as planned. We have Bryce Young and CJ Shroud, our own local Arizonan uh, GM. Steve Mathis has made his pick at number three, and we have... Tyree Wilson, woo, going with the – so that's like last year where you had like everybody kind of assumed what edge mm. was going first with Hutchinson, and then all of a sudden Jacksonville changed it up. So, Steve, what makes you lean Tyree Wilson? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, in reality, I think that this pick is going to get traded, but I wasn't getting very many realistic offers. I was trying to make a deal with Detroit, but I think it, I think everyone sort of knew that they weren't going to give me what is worth for the pick. And everyone knew what I was going to take here. So they all sort of stood pat knowing, um, you know, I was kind of stuck in this position. I don't think that's reality. But uh, I went with Tyree Wilson over uh, Will Anderson for a couple of reasons. Obviously, living out here in the desert, that's some of the smoke that I'm hearing from some of the insiders. As, as, as well as the fact that Tyree Wilson was a private visit with the Arizona Cardinals, a private workout, as, to, right. as opposed to Will Anderson, who was just a combine visit. So I sort of put some things together, and that led me to my decision to take Tyree Wilson over uh will anderson i like it i like it we've got a couple other guest gms here we've got uh chris kepner representing the raiders coming up with our next pick we've What's up, got everybody we've got chris seth who is representing the washington commanders uh his first uh order of business will be flipping off uh former owner owner daniel snyder uh and Absolutely. we have uh thomas delas who's in here representing the denver broncos so a uh, bunch of guest GMs in here, and they'll all be chiming in, helping as I make the decisions for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, so looking forward to uh, getting everything together here. As we're getting up closer, Chris, what's on your mind as you get closer to pick seven? Oh, wait, we got the pick for Seattle. Will Anderson. Getting Will Anderson at that pick at five mm -hmm. and the fact that you basically just got that as a gift for Russell Wilson is fantastic. So Chris Kepner, where's your head at here as you have one pick away? Oh, quick pick for Detroit. I'll, I'll let you make your choice. And tell us. I'm a little annoyed because I had multiple offers to trade back lined up and everybody flaked oh. and that's frustrating. But what Lou are you Anderson, do? Jalen Carter dropping to six. I, I, I don't think it's actually crazy. I think Jalen Carter dropping to six is, within possible within the realm of possibility well you guys should know that i traded let me make the pick and then i'll There we go. Peter Skaronsky. Interesting. Yeah, Tell uh -huh. us about why you went with Peter Skaronsky, who I, I agree, I think, is the top tackle on the board. Uh, well, I decided to make a trade um, with Tampa Bay for a second first-round pick. So I'm going to be on the clock again at 19. They really wanted Colton Miller, so I shipped Colton Miller off to them for 19, and we swapped thirds. Um, and so... You know, we really had to get a tackle to to fill in there. But I like the the picking up a second um, first rounder and getting a guy in uh, that left tackle spot on a controlled contract on a rookie contract. Um, and he's a beast. So, yeah, no, I, fantastic pick. I, I think that he can step in and start day one. We just saw Bijan Robinson go number eight to the Atlanta Ooh. Falcons. Uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of smoke around that pick. I, I think that it's becoming more and more, I don't want to say likely, but I think that's the first realistic landing spot for Bijan Robinson. Um, so just to recap for anybody who's just joining us, uh, my uh, co-GM, Kevin uh, Massar, is here uh, joining us as well. Kevin, welcome aboard. How are we doing? Doing well. Living the dream. Good. How are you? Good. I just executed one of the trades you negotiated. So uh, we just executed that with our uh, Saints general manager, Randy Hardman. Oh uh, yeah, the Chicago Andy. Bears have gone Paris Johnson. I agree. I think that they're super likely at uh, to go tackle at, at their pick at nine makes total sense. So just a quick recap: we've got Bryce. Oh, picks are going fast and furious. I love it. Oh, playing it. 
Uh, we had Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, uh, the Arizona GM, wild maverick he, he is, went Tyree oh, wow. Wilson with pick three. Broderick Jones, three straight tackles. That is a very uh, Howie Roseman pick, just the biggest <laughs> human available. Um, picks are flying fast and furious. Tennessee goes with Will Levis. Interesting. I think if he falls to them there at, at that pick, I, I think yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Um, again, so then we go Stroud, Tyree Wilson, Anthony Richardson at four to uh, our, our Colts GM, Will Anderson to the Seahawks at five, Jalen Carter to the Lions at six, Peter Skaronsky to our uh, Raiders GM, Chris Kepner at pick seven, Bijan Robinson to the Atlanta Falcons, Paris Johnson to the Bears, uh, Howie Roseman goes with uh, Broderick Jones from Georgia at pick number 10. And our Titans GM goes with Will Levis at pick 11. Uh, we now have Marcus Whitman uh, representing the Houston Texans up with their second pick here. Um, so not a ton of surprises yet. I, I mean, I think there's actually some smoke around Tyree Wilson going before Anderson. I think the eight is kind of the first possible landing spot for Bijan. Let's see what Marcus does here. Lucas Van Ness, interesting. I know that there was just a, a mock recently that had the Lucas Van Ness falling to the Bills at 27, which would be a weird position to be in. Um, all right, so some of our next uh, picks coming up here. Uh, Chris, w what happened to pick 16? Yeah, I traded out. Um, had interest from the Saints moving up and uh, was trying to think about what you know, Washington might realistically do as unsettled as they are right now. And I uh, was thinking they'll just be more likely maybe to, to trade out. So got a first in 2024 and thinking about trying to package stuff together, maybe to grab Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams next year. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think that the commanders are in a weird position where like no one wants to do anything yeah. too crazy because you don't know what the new owner is going to want and you don't want to marry a team to a quarterback that, the new owner isn't excited about and you don't know who the coach is going to be, who the GM is going to be all the different changes that are there. So I think it makes sense to pick up future assets. I think you got a first and a fourth was the the package I saw. Yep. Yeah. Makes total sense. I, I think that that's, that's right in line with what, what is realistic. Christian Gonzalez falling to the Patriots would be in a super athletic corner there. <laughs> I don't like that. That, sucks. that don't was, like that was my other, that was my other choice at three, by the way. Yeah. yeah I, wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to trade <laughs> back. To either yeah, that, the Lions, the Raiders, the Titans, and I wanted to take Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah, him falling to fourteen with the uh, the Patriots would not. I would not love that. I'm not a, not a fan of that at all. <laughs> Zero stars. Do not recommend. <laughs> oh, oh God, the Jets getting go. Jackson Smith and Jigba would make me. How many just, wide receivers does uh, that franchise yeah. need? Are they just going to field uh, an offense of wide receivers? The last one to go with the uh, the new age offense Which, of no offensive line and yeah. just no, wide receivers. No linemen, all, my all question, gas, no well, my, my question is, which one of those wide receivers is going to play quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Randy Braxton, 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 bring in Braxton Berrios back just to play quarterback. <laughs> okay, so um, the, the Saints GM, their trade up and trade away future picks, which we've seen them do before. They have traded away a future first for a current first. They've done that before. Uh, was for Miles Murphy. Interesting. Yeah, he was I on brand. The fact that he was on brand. We just had Darnell Wright, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. I hope lots of cornerbacks and edge go to pack this with quarterbacks, cornerbacks, and edge. All four quarterbacks have gone. Um, I think we now have seen all four top offensive tackles go in the top 13. I actually think that's very, very possible. Skaronsky, Paris Johnson Jr., Broderick Jones, Darnell Wright all going in the top 13. The first receive only one receiver in the first 17. I actually. I think Smith and Jigba around 15 is about right. I could see him 13 to the Packers. I could see him, sadly, to the Patriots, possibly. Greg, um, we work on the phones to come up. Pick if they're not um, we, I, I think it's worth poking around a little bit. It's, it's probably okay. still too expensive, my Ten. guess is. Nine. Uh, I mean, hey. I'm, I'm going to start to look around in a few picks. Just saying. Yeah, so see, see, see what's there. We're, we're getting into oh, a space the, where it's don't maybe do it affordable. Detroit. Oh God, so nervous. Yes. Oh, okay. So, Chris, who were you waiting on and hoping made it to you? Okay. Oh, this worked out perfectly. Joey Going Boyd. 
Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State. Very nice. Let's Very nice. Back. So we got an elite tackle and an, an elite corner for the Raiders. And you didn't ruin anything it. for the Bills. It was fantastic. <laughs> really good job. I'm going to start really working work the phones, Greg, just so really you know. good. Yeah, like, go ahead. Go ahead. See what we got out there. I like this react function. I haven't. I got to start doing that to people's picks. Yeah, more more poop emojis and fire and lightning bolts. And I broke someone's heart with that Joey Porter pick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Ke- Kevin will have to work the phones for us. I gotta continue with the the chat here or with the show here. Jordan Addison to the Seahawks. Oh, I said just like that. I just like that. So we've got two so receivers still looking on, to move down four tackles. So yeah, I mean, from a is anybody in the room? No, nobody else is picking here before the Bills. Okay, so this is right around where you start stacking the board. So Quentin Johnston is there. Obviously, he he would be in the queue somewhere. We'll figure out the order. Chargers are picking. We got uh, a trade that we didn't announce here. Oh, Zay Flowers. Which one, Chris? The Aaron Rodgers trade has gone through. Oh, okay. So what was the trade that that happened for? 13th and 43rd overall for 15th overall and Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Okay. I don't think that's crazy. I think that's probably the price range. It was... So they're getting a second round pick plus a little bump in that round. So basically, let's see what those choices were. So does that mean that they actually got Darnell Wright and Aaron Rodgers and the and that the Packers picked Jackson Smith and Jigwa? No, no. Uh the trade went through before. Yeah. Oh, so okay. So that those Packers were the have Darnell, Darnell right. Yeah. Okay. And then so they got Jackson Smith and Jigba and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I just like that. Yeah. I, no, I, I declined no. that. No, no, no. Um. So right now, you know, a lot of the you know Zay Flowers is a guy that the Bills would have looked at. Jackson Smith and Jigba, obviously Jordan Addison. So the top three receivers, depending on where you put Quentin Johnston, and then the top four tackles all gone. I think this is fairly realistic of what we could have. Um. So, Kevin, anybody reaching out about wanting to move up? Uh, or is there anybody here you think we should be looking at to move up for? Nolan Smith just went. Another pick for the Vikings here. Um, not offhand at the moment. Deontay Banks going, or at least a couple secondary guys going there to... All right, so now we're looking at, you know, we've got the tight ends. Brian Breesey, I, I think, is a, is a possibility. Um, so, you know, you guys here, as far as the the Bills picks go, how were you guys thinking on Quentin Johnston? Is that a guy you think the Bills should consider? I think most of the discussion has been on the, um, you know, on the side of that slot quick guy, whether it's Zay Flowers, whether it's Jordan Addison. Obviously, we would love JSN. What would you guys think uh, on Quentin Johnston? I think Quentin Johnson would be interesting in the fact that he's super traitsy. He's got a lot of just kind of athletic intangibles that they might think they can do something with. Um, do they think they can fix the contested catch thing? Potentially. I mean, hasn't had the greatest quarterback at TCU, so it would be interesting to see with a better quarterback. Uh, and it would be a nice option to line up across from Stefan Diggs um, or maybe opposite of Gabe Davis and, you know, potentially play Stefan in the slot, which we've seen has been really, really productive before. He's a guy I feel like no one is really talking about falling to 27. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of assumption he is the best big receiver early on. He's a guy that I think would push for a lot of different picks. I mean, I would have. Where he may go, let's see. I would have pushed to 24 to Jacksonville. I just couldn't get him on the horn. Yeah, Clyde Jacansi going. All right, interesting, interesting. I, I I think it that's a spot where I could see Quentin Johnston going. So the the challenge that we'll have here is we have a couple trades um, that are you know on the table here that we can pull the trigger on. Let's see what the Cowboys do. Jameer Gibbs, two running backs going early. Poop emoji, poop emoji. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, I, I, I think unless we have a trade in place, I think that our plan we discussed is in place. Do you think that's still the, the play? 
I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I'm shocked he got so, one on the board. Um, so Steve, do do we have an agreement on the trade that we discussed? Yes, sir, we do. All right. So the Buffalo Bills are going to be pulling off two trades here. We have traded Ed Oliver to the New Orleans Saints for a third round pick and a fifth round pick. We have traded D, uh, for DeAndre Hopkins from the Arizona Cardinals. And with that, we are going to trade a 2023 20, fifth and the conditional pick next year that can be worth up to a three based on games played and Hopkins still being on the roster next year. Those trades kind of help us cancel out from a salary cap standpoint. Uh, maybe we haggle with Steve on Arizona eating a little bit of money, but we'll we'll <laughs> save that for another day. And with that 27th pick, we have selected uh, defensive tackle game wrecker from Clemson, Brian Breesey, uh, who I think can step in and bring a lot of that pocket collapsing capability while also having a bit more you know, size and stoutness in the run game there. So um, right now we have basically – you know, for all intents and purposes, use the fifth round pick we received to trade away for next year. We can make up for the third rounder that we'll trade Arizona next year with the comp pick for uh, Tremaine Edmonds. And we picked up an extra third this year to swap the Ed Oliver salary and replace him with Brian Breesey and bring in DeAndre Hopkins. Those are our first moves. I, I will say a lot of this uh, did come from ideas from Kevin. He was a big uh, proponent of Brian Breesey and he negotiated the the trade there. So I'll start with with you, Steve, from a Bills standpoint, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on the way that we maneuvered this opening area? Yeah, I mean, you essentially swapped out Ed Oliver for Brian Brzee on that on that contract. That you now have the fifth year option, so you have five years of Brian Brzee. Like you said, he's a guy who can collapse the pocket, and I think a lot of Bills fans will also respect the fact that he's got more girth to him than a guy like Ed Oliver. I'm not as high on Brzee as other people, but I will say in terms of like football character, what the Buffalo Bills look for, some of the adversity that he has faced in his life, um, he screams the type of pick that the Buffalo Bills would make. And he also makes life easier for the linebackers behind him as well, being a bit bigger, girthier than a guy like Ed Oliver. So yeah. I think it's a good move. And, and not to mention you add your receiver in, in Hopkins and, and you, you collect some picks for the future as well. Uh, Steve, I just officially sent you over the trade so we can exercise this thing. <laughs> um, and we have to be able to do like, I, I think I technically asked for a future seventh that will be our representation for DeAndre Hopkins since I can't All put right. the name in there. Uh, but I like it. I, I think it puts us in that position. Chris, um, uh, we'll start with Chris Kepner. What are your thoughts if we go that direction where you're kind of restarting the contract to defensive tackle but going older at wide receiver where we could have taken Quentin Johnson? I mean, it's really similar to what I did with uh, Colton Miller and and Peter Skaronsky for the Raiders. Yeah. Um, so I, I totally get the logic of it, especially, you know, um, you're talking about a guy that, you know, you like as a game wrecker. He's, he's a big dude. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, what he can do in the middle of that, the middle of that defense. Hopefully be a, maybe a little bit more consistent. That might take some time. Right. But. So, Kevin, let's start working the phones. We now have an extra third-round pick to work with. Let's see if we can get ourselves up and get ourselves some Jack Campbell here. Okay. Everybody wanted to trade down. So trading up ought to be pretty darn doable here at some point to be able to make this work. I don't Quint know. Quentin Johnson is still there. <laughs> yeah. I well, but So there's a couple of different guys like that where some of them I don't know where the spot is. Um the same thing. A lot of people were excited about Dalton Kincaid. Let's see. Is this where Quentin Johnson went? John Michael Schmitz. Ooh, Ooh. I like it, Steve. I, I was the, curious if you were going to trade us DeAndre Hopkins the, and then just immediately take Quentin Johnson. Uh, uh, the <laughs> Arizona Cardinals projected starting center this season is Hudson Froholt. So no matter how much they're tanking, you get a marquee center in there. From day one, you get him acclimated to the NFL. You have him snapping to whatever quarterbacks are playing until Kyler Murray gets back. So to me, targeting a center at the top half of the second round was numero uno for me. I, I got like six trade offers, and I'm supposed to process them in 40 seconds. So people should have sent them to me a little bit sooner. <laughs> but I, I, I took the top I took the top center on the board, and I was just happy he was there because I was willing 
to take a Joe Tipman. I was willing to consider a Luke Whipler. That's how bad uh, I think Arizona needs a center. Kevin, you see this offer? From Rand, my, our guy yeah. Randy. So this is moving up. It would cost us our late third. We would still have a third, but it would let us move up here and take, uh, assuming Campbell's there, I would, I would tell him, I think that that's about what that's going to cost to do it. I think that's what the value is to move all the way up to. Well, for Chris's sake, let me check the value 40. charts. Let me check the value charts. I like it. I like um, it. I'm not going to let Chris off the hook there. <laughs> And <laughs> uh, we would have to tell him we would have to tell him that it would need to have our player on the board. But yeah, yeah if yeah. it is, and the fact that we picked up that extra third rounder, I'd be willing to move to 20, to the, 30, the later third. Back. 20. For what I played around with, that seems about right. Because I've looked at like what it'll cost us to move up into this range like 50 times. So that's just off the top of my head, that sounds about right. I don't know if it exactly nets out, but it seems pretty clean. Yeah, he's sneaking in extra picks, in my opinion, but I don't think that I care about. Yeah, that, the the fifth for the forward. seventh yeah, the next year. Sneak, it's a little if that's sneaky. The sweetener, but... the, ooh, whew, all right, the Seahawks did take a linebacker, but it was Drew Sanders. Uh, all right, Chris, if you traded away a pick that ends up being Jack Campbell, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> <laughs> I did trade the pick away. I know. To the Patriots. I, oh, I, I saw it. To the Patriots. If you <laughs> traded it to the Patriots and they take Jack Campbell, you're going to be off the stream and fight. <laughs> All right. The animation when a pick comes in, I feel like it's a little bit long. I, w- I want to get back to uh, correct. Well, I can actually exit out, exit but I, I want to yeah. see what the pick is. So I end up right. waiting for a second. It would be cool if it was a smaller right, like right, overlay. Right. Ready? Don't do it. I'm gonna say swear words, and that's my own show. Ooh, oh my God. there okay. we go. <laughs> All right. Um, you want know what though? If if the Patriots walk away with Christian Gonzalez falling, oh my to God! Them, there's and then Quentin Johnson. Saying, can we talk about how the, the, the Jets emojis? got Jackson Smith and Jigba and Osiris <laughs> yeah. Torrance? By the way, so uh, uh, co GM Kevin, are we accepting this deal? Yeah, we'll accept. I think in light uh, of what's win. there, I, th- I think we need to. Uh, yeah, Wait. if I'm assuming that we didn't just get sniped and I accepted the deal, let's okay, okay, <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. Um, <laughs> like I just tried it up, and we don't have anyone to pick. take Simpson, I guess. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are now on the clock. I am happy. We have now fully executed our plan. Everything Ooh. has gone exactly. Um, we got the lines are trying to come up here, Greg, <laughs> to our pick. Wait, wait, what did they just offer us? Uh, two seventeen is too far. Two seventeen is too far. That like, uh, like, don't get me wrong. Maybe I would sneak around like one or two picks, but I we can't risk it here. So we have now fully executed a plan where we have traded for DeAndre Hopkins. We have traded away at Oliver's salary to fit in DeAndre Hopkins. We have restarted the clock at defensive tackle by taking Brian Brissy uh, and inserting him a little bit bigger at defensive tackle. And we still filled our biggest need with Jack Campbell while only giving up the later third round pick. We actually still uh, moved up and, and have the higher third round pick and are going to be picking at uh, 70 instead of 91 71 instead of 91 um so so far i feel really good about this and we didn't jeopardize anything major in the future we basically traded away the third round pick that we're going to get for tremaine edmonds um for for hopkins along with the fifth for this year so i still feel really good about it so i have four picks left i like how this has come together for the bills and a d hop always got to love that (laughs) <laughs> Bo was asking how many times we're going to trade with the Saints. Uh, it, hey, as many as it takes. That, that's how many. Oh, it does move our faces up if we put the chat in there. I like that. I like this is a new layout that uh, Streamyard has, has given us here, um, with our, our faces along the bottom here. It is kind of a nice layout. I will yeah, say. I, I, it's worked pretty good for this. Rams. All right, who's coming up with the next pick out of our guest GMs? Who we got? We got Chris again at, at two fifteen. Yeah, Chris and then again. and then Chris Seth with his first pick so far at two sixteen. So, uh, Chris Seth, who are you looking with uh, the Commanders coming up here with your first pick? You got four more to go. Chris yeah, right Seth, now I'd, I'd be really happy if Kincaid continued to fall. Okay, yeah, 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 that'd be a a very nice piece to plug in there. Here's here's the thing about Kincaid though. Yeah. Like if you're if you're looking, the Buffalo Bills are looking to implement more twelve personnel. Yeah. 
Dalton Kincaid is more of like a glorified slot receiver than he is a 12 personnel guy. So are you paying Dawson Knox all that money to be the inline guy while Dalton Kincaid gets to have all the fun? Yeah, I think it's a fair question. I think for for a team like Washington, it makes more sense where you need Mm -hmm. like that number one guy and he can be receiving top target. For the Bills, I think if you were going to go the 12 personnel, it would certainly be Darnell Washington. It would be that kind of guy that you know his primary value Mm -hmm. could, could be there. Um Ooh, a trade. Another trade here. Detroit has been trying to come up for 10 picks. Here. Yeah, so, so they I, I wonder, does that mean that it was for Kincaid? Is is because he I think was kind of the top Detroit, guy? The there for I wouldn't day. be surprised if Detroit takes Henning Hooker here because he was at me for a quarterback earlier. Okay. Mm. Okay. Could be. Let's see what we got. There are a couple of interesting names here that you know Mozzie Smith is worth moving up for, Dalton Kincaid. Ready? I'm going to guess Kincaid. Is it Hooker? DJ Turner? Ooh, really? That's a good, that's wow. a good pick for them. Okay. I'm the like fastest that. guy in the draft. Fastest guy in the draft. Adding more. Obviously, they signed a handful of corners already, but trying to fix that defense, that's an interesting one. Ooh, we could have sneaked another third. I don't know that Campbell was going to go in that range. Yeah, I, I just could. I, I didn't want to risk it. <laughs> you know, I'm coming in. I would have liked to have tried to maximize the value, but hitting each of our boxes, I'm really happy with it. Let's see. Uh, we got somebody in the chat asking about who the Dolphins picked. I got to go back. <laughs> Raiders, BJ Ojolari. Very nice haul so far. Chris Kepner, GM for the Thank Raiders. You, so recap your total so far. So far, we've got Peter Skaronsky, Joey Porter Jr., and BJ Ojolari. Okay. And you did trade away one. I traded away Colton Miller. Colton Miller. Okay. So, Chris, the board fell just right. You got a future first and an extra fourth. Yeah. And perfect you got pick for Dalton Washington. You paid a. You know, first round caliber player halfway into the second round. The That's Sam Ho- nice Hall there. The Sam Howell glow up this year is going to be beautiful. By the way, <laughs> my QB, my QB one from last year. Oh, I love it! I love it. <laughs> um, wait, when are the Dolphins actually allowed to pick? Their their first actual pick is coming up here. Let's see. Okay, you had to forfeit their other pick. That's why I was laughing when someone asked about the yeah. Dolphins. Pick. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Ooh, I like that pick for Green Bay. Oh yeah, that uh, Eric Turner favorite, uh, Jartavius Martin. Eric, he came out of fast. He came out of Bills. Quick, quick Steelers pick. They must have been excited about the guy who was on the board. Oh yeah, that's Mozzie. a good one. That's a nice one. You put all oh, Put him with Cam Hayward. Oh, that just makes sense right there. So yeah. much beef. There's so much beef. Yeah, that I think, he would make a lot of sense. I think Pittsburgh does put an emphasis on the arm length with their defensive linemen. So. That is. I, I got to say, shout out to everybody doing this mock draft. We are now more than a round and a half in in the first half hour. I'm super excited about our pace. It's going incredibly well. <laughs> yeah, it's going quick. It's, it's causing panic here. attacks for me. When correct. I, I have, You're correct. I, there I have, have been some I have legit one, anxiety. I have one minute to make to make my pick at 34, and I get six trade offers in you that win in 60 those seconds. Couple seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do like that part of it. That part's been fun. I didn't like if anyone made me a trade offer, I don't know who you are. Take no offense. I had 37 (laughs) seconds. All right. So I think right now we have a little bit of a break before any of our next picks uh, come up. So let's talk as a front office for the Bills. Um, Sam LaPorta. That's that's nice. nice. Buccaneers. I like that. That's good. That's good. I was eyeing him. Before we talk about the Bills, did you guys see when Quentin Johnson got picked and there were like 15 people that smashed this poop emoji? It was insane. <laughs> Everyone was mad. Is he the Everyone most disliked player in this year's draft? It's I mean, super weird. I don't it might be. If he falls on draft night, this is an, you know, this will be an interesting harbinger of that, right? Well, I mean, talk about it. Kevin and I had a lot of conversations prepping for this in that we didn't think there was any way any of those top four tackles or four receivers made it to us because from a, like a fan and media content creator standpoint, well, those are the sexy, fun names. Those are all going to go. The fact that Johnston not only made it to the Bills, but went halfway into – or seven picks into the second round, you know, it, all the way to pick 38, I think that's – you know, that's interesting that, you know, these are all people that are plugged into their team and, you know, the needs of what's there. I, I think that it's interesting that he fell that far. Here, let's see what Cole does with the Ravens. Josh Downs. Wow. Pain. Odell. You have Odell. You have Bateman. You have Downs. Mm. You got Devin Duvernay. It's a solid four guys for yeah, Tyler Huntley. It's not too bad for Tyler Huntley. For Tyler Huntley. 
Um, all right. So we've still got a little ways. Our our swap up, we go to pick uh, eight in the third round. So that's going to be 71. Uh, so we've still got a little ways to go here. So the we've got a wide receiver, we've got linebacker, we've got defensive line. So you know maybe looking at offensive linemen here, maybe looking at a tight end. We'll see who's who's kind of falling there. Keanu Benton still on the board. I would love that, but we already got Breesy Bergeron who floating who out there. Cares? Can you picture the future of our defense for the next five to eight years with Brian Brzee on one side and you got Keanu Benton on the other? Oh, like God, that's I love me. It's a lot Brian of Brzee. beef. It's a lot of beef with Jack Campbell behind him. That's Matt right. Milano Keeping them clean. Plays. Keeping them clean. I'm usually really good with pronunciations, and a lot of the like Samoan name. That's like my downfall. I, I'm He's not very good. good at. Bruce Nolan is fantastic with pronunciations. By the oh, way, oh yeah, yeah, he why? It's because he practices it like 37 times. You hear it the 38th time. You don't know. You don't hear it the 37 <laughs> times you practice. There was a big argument on Brian Brissy's. I was reading the Clemson boards because I, I was going to say I said Brissy because I thought that's I what was it was. Trying to find some intel on them, and they've like inter- internally argue like his whole freshman year. <laughs> what I do is I just I say it differently every time. <laughs> Sometimes you use a Z and like yeah. Brissy, uh, Brissy, Dingy, Keanu Ben. That's, that's, that's good. Sadness. Pick. That's a good pick. He's going to be keeping Trey Mans clean because we all know he needs it, right? Uh, Someone in my mention says uh, says Brissy doesn't is actually not no game record potential, and he, oh, his best highlight was against Furman. So Tell him that person's crazy. Just just thought I'd give that guy a shout. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. And again, I, I don't know that he's. You know, I'm, I'm curious where he's going to go and, and what he's what his overall value is from an elite standpoint. But at 27, that's okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, we're picking twenty-seven. Like we just okay. traded our defense. You want to argue that he shouldn't go twelfth or tenth? Sure, that's fine. Which he might. He might go like top fourteen. Yeah, we're trying to tap into that that number one pit, uh, number one best player in high school potential. Yeah. Lions here were some interesting picks so far. Let's see what he does. Hendon Hooker. Is. So he's still got his guy too. Good for him. Yeah, he worked that wow. board pretty well overall. Lion Jalen he Carter at six could have had Will Levis. Uh, feel, uh, the Anaduke Azoma, uh, you know, uh, I think a fast rising edge. He got an 18. Um, then he moved up to get DJ Turner, fastest corner and, in the draft, and Hendon Hooker. And, and I will say this too one of the things that, that I'm keying on in this draft is I think Uzama is a, is a huge, like, just he's such a scheme fit for Tampa Bay mm. that I think that Tampa Bay would consider him at 19, but wouldn't want to pull the trigger on him at 19. I think Tampa Bay is an interesting trade up spot for Buffalo. If oh. there is still someone with a if there's still someone with a first round grade. Well, look right here. For, uh, look the at Buffalo the picks Bills. that go right yeah. after that, Steve. Jordan Addison at yep. 20, Zay Flowers at 21, Nolan Smith at 22. Yeah. If That's... the Buffalo if the Buffalo Bills deem one of those guys worthy of trading a first, a third, and either a third round pick next year, which we get back in our compact, or a fourth round pick next year, that's what gets you to 19. Tampa Bay gets Uzama plus another bunch of picks for their like mini rebuild. And the yeah. Buffalo Bills get one of their first round graded yeah. players. So Tampa Bay to me is where the, the Buffalo is the hot spot for the Buffalo Bills to, to trade up. Chris, why did you pick Zach Charbonnet? So I have a trade to announce. I was just gonna say I, I had to assume. Uh I moved Josh Jacobs to Jacksonville for mm. two fourth round picks. I sent them back a late sixth as yeah. a rebate. Um that give that values Jacobs at like a third round comp pick essentially, which is what I figure yeah. is the best they could possibly do if they let him walk after this year. About right. So you get that salary off the. It books. actually wouldn't because to get a third round comp pick, you need like more than fourteen million dollars a year. Yeah. Which you won't get so you probably net it out well there. And then I was able to trade up for pretty cheap to get uh, Zach Charbonnet. So. Yeah. I am excited about that. And that freed you up a little cap space too with the move of Miller. Miller wasn't a huge one, but Jacobs, all all that money goes with. So that's a... Exactly. That's a, yeah. And, uh-huh. you know, it's like maybe you, someone might think Charbonnet is a reach there, but uh, I mean, I wanted to that's get his, the guy. That's the ring. Yeah. Anywhere from 50 to 75, I think that he's a late second, early third round guy. I think that's exactly where he's, he's set up to go. And you saw here, you know... Uh, 
Bijan Robinson went eighth, and um, Jameer Gibbs was also a first round pick uh, that went early, I think, to the Cowboys, if I remember right. Jalen Hyatt, it's a yep. Cowboys pick. Yeah, I think that where was it? Yeah, Jameer Gibbs went right in front of the Bills to um, to the Cowboys. So already two running. Such running a Madden draft early. for the Cowboys makes sense. <laughs> Dom is in here, uh, said that you got it cheap because he's drunk. So good, good negotiating. Good work. That is a, a great, pick by the, <laughs> great pick by the Rams, by the way. Yeah. Dayon Henley, Henley, Henley is a guy that is one of my sneaky ones. He stood out every rep. I kept trying to figure out who the heck it was in uh, it, down in Mobile watching the practices for the Senior Bowl. Dayon Henley stood Dang. out constantly. Isaiah Foskey, that's another Eric Turner favorite, mm-hmm. a guy who is uh, rising up. I actually think this that was really good value there, getting him – at 229 so getting him you know 60 picks into the draft that's a really really nice grab by joe goodberry uh, our friend who represents the uh, bengals so so far i I'd, I'd love to like you know kind of crap on people a little bit more but there really haven't been any like iffy or terrible picks so far people have done a pretty nice job can we pull up other teams halls in the uh um Let's see what happens. You can filter there. by teams. In the filter by team. Yeah, if you go yeah, by filter go. by team at the top. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm so actually really annoyed we... at Cole Jackson with Branch and Dak. Yeah. The Chiefs are going to land the, Matthew uh, Bergeron Brian at 32, aren't they? Nelson. That is a nice one. The Chiefs are going to land Matthew Bergeron at 32, aren't they? Oh, God. <laughs> Unless somebody um, steps in. Well, someone has to be a hero here. Um. So how, how much time do we have? Oh, one pick. Jeez. Um. Oh, it's too late. So I will say, I think our guy representing the Chiefs isn't necessarily like a Chiefs guy, Jonathan Mingo. I think he is a rightfully a fast riser. The, the way he moves at his size, I think that's spot on. Where are we at? Like, what is left here at offensive line? Oh God, it is Bergeron, and then a big drop. Tipman is still there. Oh man, that is tough. He just went to. Who? I think Bergeron just went. He just is that who? Off. Is that who oh, he's saying he's taken? Did I miss it? Did I? Miss no, it? he hasn't no, picked him. He has not okay. picked him yet. It just like came off the screen on mine. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's still there for me. He's still there for me. Huh. Do you have weird. a filtered by position? No, I got the whole board. It was weird. Oh, the pick is in. I was going to offer it. This trade. is uh. Don't take pressure. Ooh, 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 Musgrave. So, tell me this. I, I, there are a couple people, like respect. Like maybe it's Daniel Jeremiah. Maybe it, mm-hmm. there's a couple people who have Luke Musgrave as tight end one, and it sounds a little crazy to me. Is it? Is anybody here to stand up for Luke Musgrave as tight end one? I'm the opposite. He's not even in my top five. Okay. Okay. I, I. I. mean. I don't know about. I. I have done work on it's, him. But it's the. It's. It's very similar to Darnell Washington. It's the, it's the athletic profile. Like, but then he showed up at the combine and didn't test the way people thought he was going to test. So I think a lot of that heat went down. But at the end of the day, like, athletically gifted tight end, but the production wasn't quite there at, at Oregon State. He's got a high drop rate. Not exactly the most willing or best of inline blockers. So to me, there's a ton of concern there, but the pass catching upside, the athletic upside is there. Uh, hey, Steve, you want to move up in the fifth round? <laughs> up in the fifth round? I'm well, thinking, I, I can think about it. Right now I got a, I, right now I got see, a pick to do with though here. I was saying, no, right here. Do you see this trade on the screen? To drop down five spots, but to move up from the 30th pick to the second pick in the fifth? Oh, I don't have any incoming trades in my uh, queue. I here. haven't said I'm showing you on my screen right now. Oh, do I want to move back how many sp- five spots? Five spots from 3-3 three, three to 3-8. Three, pick up a fifth? But you move up from 5-30 to 5-2, so 28 spots in the fifth. Uh, I'll do that. Okay. You can send that to me. Well, I've been sent multiple trade offers. Oh, wait. So if somebody seven. beat me, if some if somebody sent a better offer, it's you know. Uh get 10 seconds. Okay, I'm just gonna make my pick because I'm panicking again. <laughs> <laughs> the it clock is crazy. Steve melt multiple it goes times. So fast. It goes so fast. 
<laughs> you jerk. I had to do it. Yeah, it's it was the right bit. Like he was standing out. He was sticking out forever. That was that was the right pick. There goes Simpson. I mean, I, I I came in with a focus on on resetting both lines, and so far I've added Tyree Wilson, Matthew Bergeron, and John Michael Schmidt. So I've added a day one right. starting right tackle, a day one starting. Nobody, center, nobody wants to move up, so I'm going to do what I'm going to do anyway. Trenton Simpson and who else are you going with, Thomas? Uh, I'm going to refill the center position. Take Joe Tipman. Tipman need yes. a. Serious need on that offensive line. Already filled out. Anton Harrison can play him either side. They'll probably right tackle him. Go from there. Nice. Nice. And then Simpson there as well. All right. So now we got to figure this out for the Buffalo Bills. We've got Rasheed Rice and Marvin Mims there. If we want a younger receiver to add in, we've already added DeAndre Hopkins. Um, we have a linebacker. We've kind of swapped out Ed Oliver for Brian Brissy. Um, What position do we need to be looking at here for the Bills? tight end so we've got offensive line we're already down to jalen duncan i like interior o-line there's no one there we can also see if we get any offers oh we have been sent an offer which i'm interested in because there's not an obvious pick here you got siaki ika still there oh Oh, never mind you took a tackle you took a tackle yeah I, i actually like him as a player um but too far all right we're on the clock we got to move quick here um you know that run at offensive line really killed us uh, you know I, I would have loved any of those whether it's Tipman, bergeron you know any of those guys that are there so zach koontz is there uh tucker Jaylen Kraft, duncan maybe maker is darlin darnell washington still there is he gone he, he went the first oh okay the first. um you got blake freeland freeland but also go yeah. tank dell tank dell is yeah. available right now yeah, it's, I personally uh, like Gervin Dexter a lot too, but we, we, you know, I don't know if we can double dead. Already that. went with a yeah, Rasheed Rice, Marvin Mims, Tank Dell, down to twenty. This seconds. could be this could be Shoemaker territory. Yeah, I, that's I, I'm torn with. If we already had a D Hop, do we do a guy like Tank Dell? All right, Kevin, any big thoughts? Tank Dell or Zach Koontz? I like Dell. I think, right I think it's a. I think it's a good pick. So Josh Allen's got all the weapons. Though. I think yeah. it's a good. So now, pick I, I would have loved to get offensive line there. I would have loved to be able to bring in a, a guy, you know, that that could have done. I know a couple of people in the chat asking about, you know, the the run that went right beforehand. We lost um, all at once. You had Luke Whipler. You had Matthew Bergeron. You had. Um, Joe Tipman all go before that pick. Those are all guys that. You know, would have been great to be able to do there. Um, you know, Steve was a jerk, wouldn't trade with us the second time. I, um, dude, I had 10 <laughs> it's right pick. It's right pick. Mind. It's the right pick. Um, so being in that spot, you know, I, I think that's the kind of guy getting Tank Dell there in the third round, um, you know, has that kind of electric uh, ability. But having, we just brought in DeAndre Hopkins, we signed Deontay Hardy. I actually wouldn't mind giving Tank Dell a year to, like, you know, get in an NFL weight room and system to get himself as ready as possible because he is really small, really, really small. Um, so it's, that's one that I like. You know, but that's the way the draft's going to go. Sometimes you're going to have a bad run that, that knocks out a bunch of guys all right in a row for a position you're looking for. I feel um, redeemed. Both of the guys that flaked on me on trading up to seven – yeah. They te- they DM me and said that all the guys they wanted didn't fall to them. So, oh. <laughs> sucks for <laughs> you. <laughs> so speaking of which, you're coming up next year. Two more picks. Uh, right. Who are you looking looking for here in the third? Let's see, are either of you guys those two picks? No. <laughs> uh, I think that the Raiders need a tight end pretty badly. Yeah. Um, I like that. And there's some good ones left. That's where my that's where else I was leaning. Whether it was Schoonmaker, uh, Kraft, or Coons, I think those are all three good NFL caliber tight ends. Yeah. So it's kind of a, I mean, I feel like Laporta would have been real nice in the Raiders offense. I mean, he, you know, has a similar style to Kittle, which I would love to pair with Jimmy G, but um, yeah, that didn't work out. It was just too much, uh, too much to get done there, but shout out to our guy. uh, Brad Ward does a really nice job with the Browns. That was a really good value with Antonio Johnson falling that far. He's done a nice job too. And the safety run begins. Yeah. 
Let's look at some teams here. So we've got, uh, I just mentioned the Browns. Uh, so they <laughs> traded away a bunch of stuff. That was their first pick. And Antonio Johnson in the third round is not bad for mm-hmm. not getting to start until the third. Um, so some of the uh, spots we have here, obviously Chris Seth uh, took Dalton, Dalton Kincaid, stacked up some future picks uh, for their pick and are prepared for the uh, quarterback sweepstakes next year to to be able to look at things. Um, Thomas DeLoss, we have uh, the Denver Broncos. And he brought up Anton Harrison, Trenton Simpson, great and draft Joe Tittman. That's really a really good, good draft for them. Yeah, really good spots to fill there. Chris Kepner has been moving up and down the board like crazy. Uh, he traded away Colton Miller. He traded away Josh Jacobs. But That's he has brought good. in Peter Skaronsky. He brought in Joey Porter Jr., B.J. Ojolari, Jack Sarbonnet, and Tucker Craft. Really good, really good haul there. I, li- I like that. I think, mm-hmm. um, I think those uh, so far, everyone's done a, a very nice job. And then our Arizona Cardinals GM Steve Mathis. We have Tyree Wilson, John Michael Schmitz, and Matthew Bergeron. I, I there's, think it's, there's the beef. There's the beef. You know. <laughs> Uh, but I, like you said, they got to rebuild in the trenches. Mm-hmm. That is a team that is not going anywhere. I think that, heck, if anybody's going to give uh, Chris Seth a run for the the Caleb Williams sweepstakes for next <laughs> year, it could be the Cardinals. Laying um, a foundation. <laughs> Literally laying a foundation right now. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to do it. Any other uh, is, other uh, Is, is other Kyler going to be able to out? see over that line? <laughs> uh, she's certainly not going to see over Joe Tippmann. Uh, that's why i didn't sure. take him uh, schmitz is schmitz is a sneaky 315 like i stood like three feet away from him while we were interviewing him and like he's very he has a very thick lower half like in his face and upper body he doesn't look like a huge dude and then as you walk away like oh okay yeah he's he's definitely big but like he doesn't look like a huge hulking guy it's it's mm-hmm. it's weird marvin mims nice pick here for the- i'm working the phones greg um yeah. But I won't tell you until it's a little more concrete. Okay. 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 It's a, uh, it's a, it's a wild one. <laughs> All right. Um, we've got. I, I wouldn't mind getting Zach Kuntz or Luke Schoonmaker, and I don't think they're going to make it to four twenty eight. So we'll see where that goes. I wish there was a little bit better on the offensive line available. We're getting now into a little bit more of the projection Brown. stuff. Blake Freeland basically is Spencer Brown. Where it's just another um, tall, lanky, super athletic kind of project tackle um obviously you know Voorhees is still there i think is a draft and stash red you know kind of red shirt year deal nick saldivari and i know that um that's a guy that you've talked about a little bit steve isn't it saldivari yeah saldivari is a guy who he can come in and compete at right tackle and if you don't really like the way you know he's operating at right tackle you you can kick him inside and he projects really well at right guard as well he's just he's sort of a, a technician and somebody that i know eric is high on and and someone he believes that Aaron Cromer would Whew, sort of, uh, Aaron Cromer would sort of hone in on because he's one of those tackles who projects inside, which is something that Aaron Cromer enjoys. Yeah, yeah, it's a big fan of those. The Lions just took At Perry. That offense is insane. Love they got a bunch of guys suspended. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> heck, they, 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 they need it right now. They just had four oh, guys man. suspended for gambling. I'm excited about the way this is falling, you guys. Let's Chris Kepner is just pick. Williams dealing right now. <laughs> Boom. Yaki Ika. Oh, God, I love that pick. That Your draft that is, is slaying right now, Chris. <laughs> Let's see. The picks are moving. I, like, I, I love how fast the draft's going. Peter Skaronsky, Joey Porter Jr., B.J. Ojolari, Jack Char- Zach Charbonnet, oh. Tucker Craft, and Siaki Ika. Seattle. Seattle. You have a Seattle. Picks. Seattle adding Clark Phillips, man. So let's see. Uh, Seattle, Will Anderson fall into five, Jordan Addison at 20, Drew Sanders, Steve Avila, and Clark Phillips. That's, That's a nice haul. And the thing, too, you are 100% correct. Getting guys who understand their teams because you can simulate all you want. Like Seattle is one of those teams that, like, they draft awkwardly and they draft a little bit differently and they have certain, like, archetypes and prototypes and, and, and players that they look for. And you look at that draft and you think to yourself, like, That's a Seahawks draft right there. Like, yep. and that is a Seattle Seahawks draft. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Couple uh, Olu Oluwatami still there. Juice Scruggs still there. There's a couple of interior guys that are interesting. If uh, anybody's a fan of Jarrett Patterson, still there. Let's see if the Dolphins can mess this first up. First pick, okay. first pick for the Dolphins, running back. Br- oh, I Brenton hate them. I hate Strange. them so much. That's a great pick for them. That's a great pick for them. 
Uh, well, and you talk about, again, guys who know their team. That's the kind of, you know, when you have a coach who lets Mike Gesicki mm-hmm. go because they want more Walker. snaps for Durham Smythe, you take a guy like Brenton Strange. That, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a good pick. I mean, Brenton Strange is a guy who's he, he'll give you stuff in the passing game, but is also going to maul you in the running game. So he's yeah. the type of tight end that they look for in, in Miami in that in that San Francisco Kyle Shanahan offense. I like it. Dominic, this is my uh, my almost three month old son. Hey, 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 how we doing? Making a show debut. You got an assistant hey, GM over there. What's up, Greg? <laughs> Does he like your draft? Does he like the Broncos draft? Is he happy with it? No. No, he's disappointed. <laughs> he he, he, bought, he spit up on the draft. He just took a crap, so I think that's pretty much what he was telling me. <laughs> Dolphins coming back to back here, so they took Brenton Strange and then Blake, Blake Freeland. That's that's really nice picks for them. That's a, for them not jumping in until this late. That was a pretty good job. All right, it's like a potential Nickelback. <laughs> All right, so who do we have coming up next for our group here? The next pick, we have a little bit of break. Steve coming up here with a late third. And then right after that, Chris Seth is right after him. So I got, I got to bring something up to you, Greg, because we're, Ready. we're, we're talking. Who, who's how who's you... offered you, who's whispered sweet nothings into your ear? I have a fifth round pick on that. Do we, what, where's our, where's our board? Where, where do we, I don't, what do we have left? So we have left, we have 428. We have five two and six twenty eight. So five two has been offered to us. I want you to think about it for a second. Okay. Four. Austin Eckler. Oh God. Five two. Now we're not talking. Just to get off of the contract, they they just want to get yeah, off of five the two, and we get. So I mean, obviously, in this exercise. I think you'd probably figure out a way to do that, but that's it. it, it, That is, it would be very hard to trade for DeAndre Hopkins and Austin Eckler, like, and to fit any semblance of those contracts in. So, in a vacuum, obviously, that's a deal you'd do. You'd figure it out. He's too good of a talent to add in 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 our championship window and what you'd be able to to approach. I, I think that it's, you know, that would be really hard to turn down in my opinion in reality after doing the deandre hopkins trade um it it would be pretty tough to to pull that off like I, i'd have to play around to figure out could you even fit it of, of how you do it and, and how you'd structure it um and i would say I, I mean i know he's disappointed and frustrated and there's talk about him wanting a contract and understanding he may need to play for the chargers i I don't see any scenario where the Chargers actually do that for a fifth. Do you? I mean, it's a running back and it's expensive running back. I... He's not crazy expensive this year, though. No, it's actually relatively. It, it's the yeah. I, the fact is that, like, I don't know, is he even playing on that contract? Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming he'd want an extension, and then that's how it would be. Like, you'd get a couple years, you'd and, get you the know, cheap this, part, and yeah, then the... you'd get the cheap part now, right? Yeah. Um, you'd structure it to kind of run into some deals going, going off the books. Maybe, you know, obviously Mike is off the books, you know, some form of, you know, we'll see where Vaughn is that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, exact. Um, I'm just thinking of the offense. With, oh God. It, I mean, Eckler it would be, and it would Diggs be awesome. And it would be awesome and to be able to see and that. D- Gabe Davis. I mean, that's a Super Bowl offense. Yeah. <clears throat> Getting through these couple of picks here. We've got a couple of the other guest GMs who have been jumping in. Helping with teams. Um, I think Vinny, our uh, Seattle Seahawks GM, is going to jump in with us here in a minute. We just talked about how nice their draft turned out and some of your kudos, Steve. We'll we'll hear from him here in a moment. And then we'll uh, bring on our, our multiple trade partner, uh, Randy Hardman, who represented the Saints and talked about the haul that he worked through. And uh, hear from some of the guys who are helping us here with this exercise. So, I, I mean, it, Kevin, in, in a vacuum, I would – say yes but i i don't i don't think that's very realistic that they would trade for eckler and hopkins um if it if we hadn't done the other trade i think i i would have done it and we, <laughs> i would have figured out how to use them but i i don't want us to be like oh hey look we traded for all 
these guys and I know it messes with the with the realism of it, but yeah, Dolphins no, in a... back to back tight ends by the Dolphins, uh, by the way. And then what? Who's running that? Maker? Interesting. Uh, it's a group called Go To Dolphins. It's actually like a oh, group okay. of three guys who does a show on the on the Dolphins. Okay. All right, Steve. Who are you taking here? One of my guys in this draft, Jamie, Jamie Robinson, Robinson out of Florida Jamie. State. Like there's there's he floated out there for a bit there was he was he was a uh, a pre-draft visit with the arizona cardinals so they have that familiarity with jamie robinson he was a top 30 visit so it tells me that he's on the arizona cardinals board and on top of that there's the questions surrounding buddha baker and his future in yeah, arizona yeah. i it's think so that so. they keep i think they keep buddha and they try to work something out if, if buddha does get dealt i believe he gets dealt in training camp but uh, you get some Buddha insurance and Jimmy Robinson and a guy who um, you can work onto the field with, with, uh, with the safeties that they have. All right. Before we bring on our friend Vinny here to represent the, the Seahawks, uh, Chris Seth, you just made your second pick. So now we had Dalton Kincaid and Jalen Duncan for a late third, getting that pick that late. I think that was a nice one as well. Yeah. Thought that was solid value. And um, especially considering they've got Andrew Wiley at one of their tackles. And I, I don't, I'm not convinced about him anywhere. Play ball, period. I uh, real quick shout out to again to to uh, Brad Ward here. I like that Zach Harrison pick. He had been floating out there for a while. Was a guy that I kind of had had my eye on. So I, I like that pick this late. You're getting into like pick hundred uh, the hundredth pick here and getting a guy like Zach Harrison. I think is nice value. So Vinny, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to jump on. All right. So I'm going to add him in here. Uh, Vinny, welcome. He's a, a frequent follower for anybody who uh, uh, doesn't recognize him. Uh, is all the, all, out there all the time with uh, Bill's Mafia, but very informed on what's going on with the draft and has done a nice job. You actually, before you jumped on, got some kudos from Steve on the haul that you put together for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Can you guys hear me all right? Yep, yep, you sound good. Cool. Yeah, I was funny because you were saying, uh, you know, know your team. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> uh, but hey, I, I've uh, been uh, uh, doing a lot of mock drafts uh, over the years. So um, kind of just did a little research and uh, what the Seahawks needed. I feel like uh, I was funny. I was talking to another one of the drafters, uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan Carroll, who's, in, who's yeah. representing the Rams. Yeah, the Rams. And, yeah, we were kind of talking because he's, he's actually a Seahawks fan. And I was telling him, I feel like that division's right for the picking. Uh, this year, especially with all the, I mean, the 49ers, you know, probably overall have the best roster, but uh, still a lot of know, questions at quarterback. A lot of questions at quarterback. They they lost some key guys uh, in free agency, so uh, I was really happy with their draft so far. I was pretty surprised that uh, Anderson uh, fell to to five. I, I had an offer potentially on the table to move down, but couldn't pass up Anderson. And then, nice. uh, yeah, I think. Addison uh, is going to be a really great slot guy for the for the Seahawks. You pair him with Lockett and Metcalf. I think that's one of the top ten to, uh, if he reaches his potential uh, trios of uh, wide receivers. So I was really thrilled thrilled with that. Uh, and then the we, rest. We of the were picks, very happy uh, as the Bills yeah. front office that you when you traded up for Sanders that that's the linebacker you took, so we could still trade <laughs> up for Jack Campbell. So that that made us happy. But I, I think Sanders is a nice fit there with the way they could use him. It's kind of more of a movable chess piece. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, I was kind of bummed that they, as a Bills fan, they signed, re-signed Wagner this year. But uh, I think, you know, learning from one of the best of all time is not going to hurt him. So. And then Avila, I think, was a nice pick. And I think Phillips is the kind of guy that you know, fits with that secondary. We saw with, you know, the traitsy uh, ideas of the people that you've seen them bring in in years past. It's It's been, a, a, you know, a a very logical fit of, of who they would bring in here. Exactly. Yeah. We really needed a guard. Uh, the jets, I think it was the jets, uh, got, uh, Osiris right before our pick. That's why wow. I took, uh, Sanders, but uh, I was, I was happy with Avila. Uh, he's used to blocking for a mobile, uh, quarterback with, uh, D Duggan. So I think that's a great fit. And, uh, Phillips, uh, again, another value pick. Um, so I'm yeah. yeah, really thrilled with the draft so far. I'm really annoyed that the Jets got Jackson Smith and Jigba and Osiris Torrance. That well, it's ran great. by Bills fans, just so you know. Yeah. Okay, there we go. See? <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> making good picks because you know, they root for the right team. 
All right. Um, so do we have anybody coming up here on the clock immediately from our panel? Uh, Steve uh, coming, coming up again. Up, uh, Steve here. and then Thomas. Yeah. And Steve and then Thomas. We are coming. So Steve, talk us through uh, what you've got so far for the Cardinals and who you're considering. Yeah. So, so far for the Cardinals, again, like I said, this is a foundational draft. Tyree Wilson is an edge player. They they really have no defensive line right now. Uh, John Michael Schmitz is a the center. They had no center. Matthew Bergeron comes in. He's a plug and play day one right tackle. I wasn't expecting him to be there. I was going to go IDL with that pick. Uh, and then Jimmy Robinson uh, was just sticking out there at 96 with the with the future of Buda Baker in doubt. So I'm definitely leaning towards, uh, I, I don't want to give it away too much, but I guess it's just the Houston Texans who have already taken one. So I'm leaning towards and Marcus IDL. is streaming, so yeah, he's yeah. not listening. Uh, um, I'm leaning towards IDL with my next pick okay. here. And got Dorian Williams. Dorian Williams off the board. Pick, which if the Bills didn't get Jack Campbell, I think is an interesting mid-round guy to look at. So I'm a little I'm a little torn here on who I'm gonna take uh, as my IDL. There's a bunch of interesting names. Jack on Roy, yeah, Young, uh, Mojo Jomo, uh, Moro Jomo. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna go with. Uh, I think there will be some some one text later on in this draft. So I'm gonna go with a, a little bit more off of the the uh, the cuff here, and I'm gonna take one of the very few three texts I believe are left. I'm gonna take Kobe Turner. Uh, Ooh, Wake Forest nice. off the board. I know it's pro Ant, one of pro, pro Ant's favorite players in this draft. So I'm going to add a three tech here and then look to maybe regroup and take a, a five tech later on. Or not a five tech, excuse me, a one tech later on. I like it. I like it. Let's see. Uh, so Thomas, you've got three pick, two more picks coming up here. We just shared your board so far. You've got Anton Harrison, the tackle from Oklahoma early in the second. Trenton Simpson, linebacker from Clemson, again a guy that I think many Bills fans are, are familiar with, and then Joe Tipman, uh, you know, really nice pick there with the, the huge center from Wisconsin. So now you've got two offensive linemen, a linebacker. What are you looking at here with your pick coming up here now, and one more pick? I think you're on mute. Trying to make Russell Wilson's job just a little bit easier. Uh, okay. Obviously, we saw things were a little bit struggling last year. Um, I, I'm I'm leaning between either beefing up the defensive line, which I literally think somebody just took. Nope. I'm looking at two different guys, defensive line and potentially a wide receiver. I already traded um, Jerry Judy and working the phones right now, potentially sending off another uh, offensive weapon. So kind of working through some things, but we'll see where we're going. Like it. I like it. See who you take here. We got your one more pick, and then you're up. I'm just impressed that we have three rounds of the draft done in the first hour. It's fantastic. Carl Brooks. That was that that was a name that was sticking out for me as falling here. I I, I don't know if I was ready to move up and trade up for him, uh, Kevin, but it was a name that's interesting. Jaden Reed. Nice pick, Thomas. I, I like that one a lot. Uh, he's a, a a name that I think could certainly be in play for the Bills as well. Um, a guy that you know, so that Kevin and I were kind of talking about here. You know, we had a big run at tight end. I don't know if there's uh, Steve. Any guys that stick out to you here? Uh, Josh Wiley, Cameron Laytu, Will Mallory, Davis Allen, Payne Durham. Uh, you know, we had a big run in tight ends there for a little bit. Any later round guys that are intriguing to you? Oh, I think uh, Steve might have stepped away for a second. We got coming up here a couple of Falcons picks. Uh, I think Chris Seth is our next pick, and then Chris Kepner after him. All right. Got a little ways for the Bills before our pick comes up here. Anybody in the chat, you know, looking at where we're uh, going here? Uh, great call from. Uh, AJ uh, Sabolski, uh, anybody who's watching here, we appreciate you guys. Make sure you press the like button. It helps a lot. Give us a comment. Let us know your favorite pick. Uh, let us know uh, what we've had going on here, how, how much uh, you, you like or hate what we've done. Um, I think this has actually turned out really realistic with everyone so far. I'm really pleased with the way that it, it's come together and the picks that everyone has made. I think, you know, for the Bills so far, you know, again, we did the trades early. So we traded that Oliver, got some extra, um, got some extra movement. Replaced him with Brian Brissy, traded for, uh, you know, obviously DeAndre Hopkins, which is a huge addition. 
still added Tank Dell as, as that younger uh, speed option in the receiving course, or two in the receiving room already. Uh, we did trade up for linebacker Jack Campbell, so we've checked off a lot of the major need boxes. You know, I, I still think there's area to bring in some offensive line still. I'd like a tight end. I wouldn't mind an edge rusher. You know, so I think a lot of things are on the board right now. I think we're pretty open to whatever some of the, the best players are of, of where they might fall. Um, and as we kind of look through here, so, some of those positions here, you know, I, I think there's some interesting names. Again, we already took Brian Brissy, but Jacqueline Roy is a name I like. Andrew Voorhees, I think, is a really nice draft and stash kind of player that we could afford to redshirt. Uh, looks like he may literally have just come off the board as I was talking. The Rams have taken... Andrew Voorhees. All right, so it's a. I think especially when you get into the fourth round, that's a really nice spot where, you know, stashing a guy on day three where you can just redshirt him and bring him up next year. I think that's a nice pick. That was a good job by Nathan. I think that's a good way to approach it. Eric Robinson, our Falcons guy, I think has been doing a really nice job. I want to pull up his draft so far. So he opened up with Bijan Robinson, got Derek Hall in the third, Sidney Brown, or in the second, uh, Sidney Brown in the third, Trey Palmer in the fourth, and now Emil uh, Ekior, uh in the fourth. I think it's a nice haul for the Eric's put together for the, the Falcons. All right, we've got another Panthers pick. Xavier Hutchinson, very nice. Like that late for them. Yeah, AJ chiming in here. Really like the draft hall. Just rough that you got. Uh, just rough that you couldn't get a tackle with that run uh, before your pick. But that you know that those things happen on draft day. You can't you know phrase it perfectly. Same idea as uh, that Kevin and I talked about with the. The Jack Campbell trade, you know, obviously I'd love to thread that needle perfectly and, you know, trade up to the exact spot right before he was going to go, but you don't know when that's going to be. So sometimes you have to just kind of take your, your shot while you have it and, and be able to go and, and uh, take the pick where, when you have the opportunity. All right, Chris, Seth, we've got him coming up here in one more pick. So Chris, talk us through, what are you considering here as it comes up to uh, the next commander's pick? Chris, you there? Yeah, Randy says I wanted Riley Moss. And ah, okay. Is that any better? There you go. No, I got you. Um, I got you. Uh, yeah. So no. Uh, yeah, Randy and I are going to have words because I wanted Riley Moss. Um, <laughs> I love quickness, ball skills, four-year starter for Parker's system there in Iowa. And um, yeah, not happy. Not happy. <laughs> yeah, and especially so the end of the fourth a, round. Uh, into the fourth round. This um, is pretty big need for one. Um, it, it's probably going to end up being Eli here. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. It. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be rip. From, uh, I like it. Our commander's pick is in, and then we've got Chris Kepner coming. I don't, up I don't next. think you can argue with a uh, defensive backs from six. Yeah, if, if uh, Nick Saban signs off on the defensive back, it's worth considering. Uh, it's, it's always going to be the way it goes. Chris Kepner, your ridiculous haul so far. Who are you adding to it now? Uh let's see. Who to pick? You know, there's so many options because the Raiders need lots of help. But yeah, you, yeah. Unfortunately, you've done a great job with the draft, and now they're going to go eight and nine instead of <laughs> six and six and eleven. Um, I think they still need some more help on defense. I'm kind of leading Henry two o two o if he's still there. Okay. okay. Uh, he did. He survived. The Rams went with got one more pick. Um, but we'll see. Then I'm up again at. 25 that's nice yeah, and the bills are actually coming up here at 28 uh, so i've got a, a little bit coming up
Nick Saldivari is standing out. I know Carter Warren is another guy. Warren McClendon. Those are all guys that I think are interesting and w- would make some sense here. But Saldivari is sticking out for me. The Steelers have selected Noah's tool. So there you go. Your guy made it to you. He sure did, but I might be changing my mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I think the need actually might be bigger for them at interior offensive linemen. I might be going O O O here. Oh, uh, oh, Olu Olu Tommy. Yeah. I like it. I like it. You know who sticks out for the Bills if if uh, if he's still there? Yeah, Roshan Johnson. Oh, interesting. I hadn't really considered running back. Did yeah, want to announce a... a real quick trade if you guys don't mind. Okay, yeah, go ahead. The, uh, Broncos have traded KJ Hamler and a sixth round, the 18th pick in the sixth round for the 16th pick in the fifth round. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, and uh, who have you? So, you've now traded both Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler. You brought in Jaden Reed. Who are you looking at with this next pick coming up? Are you looking to uh, replace a receiver there, or are you looking in another direction? You feel comfortable with who you guys got? Um, we may. There is still a lot of talent still on the board in terms of wide receiver. We might hold off a little bit in terms of wide receiver because there's a couple other needs. More pressing at the moment. We'll see. Vinny, uh, who are you looking at here with your next pick? Yeah, well, before I do that, I did just make a trade uh, with the Titans. Um, okay. We made a trade for – it's kind of an interesting one. Um, it's We gave up one of our two fifth-round picks for Malik Willis. Uh, I know he hasn't proven a lot, but I feel like we wanted a developmental quarterback, and he doesn't have to start. Uh, and doesn't prohibit us from you know drafting a quarterback in the next couple of years. So that's a trade that we made uh, for our fifth round pick. And then like what it. I'm going, yeah, thank you. Uh, and I think I'm going to do here is go with uh, a D tackle. Uh, I really like uh, Jacqueline Roy out of LSU. So that's who we're going to select. I like it. Uh, Jacqueline Roy, I think, was one of the best values sticking out here out of all the the teams that were there. Kevin, welcome back. We um, we have five more picks coming up until us. Um, so some of the names that I've looked at, uh, Nick Saldivari uh, as a versatile offensive lineman, whether he plays tackle or guard, is there. I think War- uh, Carter Warren and Warren McClendon are both worthwhile picks. Um, looking, you know, tight end really got raked over. Um, we had a, a rough spot from a... Uh, Tight end run, not a ton of guys. Josh Wiley is there from Cincinnati. Uh, Payne Durham from Purdue. Uh, Will Mallory from Miami. Not a lot of guys screaming value here. Um, from an interior standpoint, uh, Chris Kepner just made a very, really, really nice pick this late into the fourth. Olu Oluwatami had fallen a good ways. Jarrett Patterson is there. Juice Scruggs from Penn State is there. Uh, I think those are all guys who are, are worth considering. Any other positions you want me to look at, Kev? I think you got them covered for that. I'm just looking through the board myself. Um, I like Josh Wiley from Cincinnati. Um, I mean, I, I think this judge, I'm not I'm not against Roshan Johnson. Um, I think that that's... Moro a- Jomo is a guy that I know uh, last night or on Wednesday night on Aaron and I's show, we had Chris Trapasso on. He was a big fan of a Jomo, his like penetration three tech ability. Um, right now, I think I'd be leaning towards Saldivari if he makes it. Will you look Varian at that, Obershaw. guys? 2020 fell to me. Hey, 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 hey. boom. More good things Done. happening for the Las Vegas Raiders. You might get them all the way to 500. Uh- <laughs> They had, I mean, a ton of picks. Yeah, hey, I mean, it's just a fun team to take. And obviously, I think you've done a great job with it. Um, You know, I think you probably dig a little deeper when you trade away guys like Colton Miller and, um, you know, Colton Miller and Josh Jacobs. But when you bring in this kind of draft class, I think that's kind of foundational building that you do to be able to get things turned around. So even if it's not amazing for 2023, 
you're still setting yourself up uh, very well for the long haul. Yeah. So the idea, right, is like, I mean, they've just brought in Jimmy G on a three year deal. And, and, you know, I just don't like the idea. I know they've met with like every quarterback in the draft, but I don't like the idea of them taking a quarterback high this year. It's just to me, if I was, you know, I'm like playing this as if I'm their GM, right? So I would give Jimmy G a year. Um, and build around or build around him and then if it's not you know if you don't feel like Jimmy G is going to be the guy in that offense to take you far over the next like five to seven years like you know then after this year you can look to draft somebody um, and develop while you still have him you know as, a, as your bridge quarterback so Kevin we got one more pick here in just a moment uh, the, until we are up here so uh, some guys that I've queued up um, I've got Nick Saldivari. I've got Juice Scruggs, Brandon Joseph, uh, safety from Pitt, uh, Edge of uh, Vialemi uh, Fahoko, who I think is actually an interesting uh, possibility here. Um, right now, I'd be leading Saldivari. It, it feels strongly any other direction? Not strong enough. No, no, I'm really not feeling too strong. Um, so Steve had brought up, um, obviously, you know, the Texas running back Roshan Johnson. Um, I like Roshan. I um, really so do. I, I, I like it. Sean Tucker or uh, Tucker still there as well. Um, we do have another pick coming up pretty quickly. Um, so I, I think we could look there. I, I like the idea of just picking up the best lineman or best running back who doesn't get drafted. <laughs> um, and then being able to bring him into camp with the, the running backs we already have. I think I'm going to go Saul the bar here. You, you comfortable with that? Yeah. Yeah, that's I fine. think he's he's got versatility on the offensive line. I think that that's a good way to to approach that. There, I like the way this class is coming together, and we got another pick coming right on top of it here. Um, and then, uh, so Vinny, I've, we've got another guest coming on here before we uh, swap you out with uh, our man Randy Hardman. Any other thoughts here? I think you, your class came together really nice for what you've done for Seattle. Yeah, no, not at all. Thanks. It was a blast. Uh, I was, got everybody we wanted, uh, well, like every position we wanted, and uh, happy to give a shot with uh, Willis, uh, see where that develops. So, yeah, I was, I was pretty pleased. It was, it was a fun experiment. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think you did a great job. Really appreciate you jumping on, and thanks for uh, jumping on the show here with us. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care. Good all job, right, Vinny. Randy, welcome aboard our uh, our Saints uh, GM here, multiple time trade partner. What's going on? You got, you got those TPS reports, Randy? <laughs> I, I I do actually. Yeah. Let's see, we got offered. So Kevin, we have a trade on the board. We've been offered five, uh, two fifths, five twenty three and five thirty two, for our five two and six twenty eight. And a little bit of a bump next year to six. Value wise, sure. it's fair. It's the appropriate value. I don't think it's anything crazy. It would really be is there somebody here that we love at this pick, or are we okay dropping down a little bit, but getting I like Jared Patterson earlier? a little bit. Um, yeah, Patterson's nice. He, he's he's like my favorite. I would be I would be on the top. I don't think we're getting much value. Um, there with that, like it's, it's fair. probably fair. Yeah, it, it's um, it's accurate, but it's not. If if there was nobody I liked here, I, I'd be more interested. But there's actually a couple guys. The fact that Kayshawn Booty has dropped as far is is crazy too. At some point here, he's worth. I don't think we can add a third receiver after we already added DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> I mean, if the board falls, <laughs> you know, I mean, at some point, what are you we, doing? <laughs> what like trading Gabe Davis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at some point here, we we. Need to. I, I like offensive line. Um, I think we could look safety at some point here. Again, I, I think that there are some guys that I, I don't hate at tight end, but I think we could wait to, for that later pick to take one of the tight ends at that spot. Uh, I, I like your idea for Patterson. I, I think if we were able to add Saldivari and Patterson, those are both nice additions to the, the thing. So that I guess that would be it. If 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 one of these two takes Patterson, then I guess I would take it just to move back. Oh, we're on the clock. All right, I, I like it. I think Patterson. I like really Patterson. Nice I literally, I really think he's undervalued. He's he's. I think what you're looking for in the fifth round. So, yeah, they, this is a guy who can make a roster, can be a good developmental guard. Um, so the fact that we add Saldivari there, who has well, you guys suck. 
<laughs> uh, so I'm really glad we were helpful for uh, Randy and uh, his selections there. I, I assume that you wanted one of Saldivari or Patterson. Sounds like uh, it. Yeah, I had Patterson next to my queue, so appreciate appreciate the, uh, the steal there. He wanted us Glad to trade that bad. <laughs> um, so I Randy, was talk us through. I was waiting for him to fall. Talk us through a little bit. So you have gone kind of aggressive to trying to win this wide open uh, NFC South division. You traded away next year's first and fourth to get an extra first this year. You you took Miles Murphy. Then at twenty nine, I think a really nice value. You got Michael Meyer, uh, the the Notre Dame tight end. Tyler Scott, a uh, receiver from Cincinnati in the third. Uh, Devon A-Chain, who is like a human water bug at running back out of Texas A&M. And then Riley Moss, who actually really pissed off uh, fantastic <laughs> producer uh, Chris Seth here when you stole him uh, right before he picked for the Commanders. Talk us through a little bit about the class you put together here for the Saints and multiple trades you pulled off. Sure. Um, so I knew that I wanted to try and get an extra uh, first um so that's where the the trade uh, with washington came in um looking at new orleans and what they needed they were pretty heavy need across the defensive line um edges a more premium position than defensive tackle so i decided to make the trade for ed with the idea that we're gonna let him play on the deal and then possibly extend him um i did end up getting a third and a fifth back in a trade with the rams so it didn't really lose a whole lot there um the first pick miles murphy with the edge it just made sense there to take him, um, put him on the other side opposite Cameron Jordan, um, and then he'll be kind of rotating through with uh, Granderson, uh, hopefully taking snaps away from Granderson, uh, who's an all right player, but he's not, you know, he's not anything special. Um, the mayor pick, Derek Carr, Darren Waller, did a lot of good things in Vegas, so I want to try and duplicate that, add some more weapons for Carr. I can't get out of that contract for at least two years. So I want to try and give him as many weapons as possible. Uh, Mayer adds a, a nice security blanket and a potential playmaker there. Um, and then the same thing with Tyler Scott coming in as a wide receiver, you know, three, four, um, you know, adding some speed to the offense. He's a guy that can be quarterback friendly, um, has a lot of run after catch ability. So that was kind of the thinking with the first three picks. Um, Devin A. Chain, I channeled my inner Chan Gailey. I said, I'm going to need a jitterbug. And uh, to pair him with Jamal Williams as more of a goal line and power back was um, something that I was pretty excited about. I, I thought he was going to go a few picks before that, so I was I was pretty happy when he fell. I know. Uh, than us. I, I'm a big fan of Danny Kelly over the ringer, and he talks about uh, Devin A. Chain, you know, that it's you know probably his favorite player to watch the film of in the draft. And he said, you know, I, I give mm -hmm. this caveat ahead of time. I can't swear that he's going to survive in the NFL. I can't like he, he might not he might not make it but if he makes it he's gonna be so much fun it's gonna be so fun if he makes it yeah and i think you know with new orleans with that gulf coast offense that they that they run that they're still running because the offensive coordinator you know carried over from the peyton era um you know i think he's gonna be a good all-purpose weapon they're probably gonna lose kamara for at least a few games for that suspension that's incoming um, so I didn't want him to be stagnant and just have Jamal Williams and then a bunch of, you know, guys behind him. So I want to try and add some versatility and a weapon there, uh, to keep that, to keep that room spicy. Um, and then Riley Moss, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer where, where he went. I thought it was a great value. Um, I know judge and I have talked about him several times before, so I feel so, good about that one. Speaking of value, I'm going to open up to the panel here. Maybe I'll start with you, Steve thoughts on, uh, Keshawn Booty going all the way into the fifth round. Uh, well, first of all, like he's a guy who's known for his athletic upside, and then he didn't test well. So yeah. when you are drafting a guy as like a raw athlete, and then he doesn't test well, that's the first thing that dinged him. The second thing that dinged him is his character concerns. I think yeah. some of the things that he's been um, pretty credibly accused of are NSFW, not suitable for, for uh, mm -hmm. the live stream. Some of the incidents that occurred at the uh, the Sugar Bowl this year. So. Just being reckless off the field, not testing well. Uh, I'm not surprised that Keishon Beauty dropped as far as he did. And there are some people talking about how he might not get drafted at all. Yeah, I, I think it's a name that, you know, as, as a prospect coming out, you know, coming into this season was uh, he was listed up there as like a potential top five pick mm -hmm. overall and just a it really tough to, you know, be able to see a guy like that. And now, 
you know, it, it happens all the time. They, they just don't put it together. They don't bring the the overall work works uh, mm-hmm. work ethic into it. Uh, Randy, talk us through who you got uh, coming here on this pick. Ken, ah, uh, Co- Coburn, I like that. So again, I want to reinforce that defensive line. I already got Ed Oliver. I got Miles Murphy. And now I'm taking the big plugger in the middle to go right next to Ed. You know, Ed functions best when he has a little bit of help next to him. Yep. They bought in uh, Kayleen Saunders from KC this offseason. So now I'm going to bring in some more beef. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, for the panel here, we got, let's see, Chris Seth is our next one coming up with a pick. Then we got a little bit of a, a stretch. So I just nabbed, uh, I just nabbed Charlie Jones for the Raiders offense. Oh, okay. I mean, it just right. feels like a feels like a Josh McDaniels type of guy. Very much he? so. Very much so. One more pick, and then Chris Seth has uh, Commanders on the board. Um, so again, to recap, the the Buffalo Bills, we have uh, traded Ed Oliver to Randy in the the New Orleans Saints. We replaced him with uh, Clemson defensive lineman uh, Brian Brissy. We also traded for DeAndre Hopkins. We traded up to get Jack Campbell at the linebacker spot. We tra- uh, drafted Tank Dell, uh, who can now kind of study behind Deontay Hardy there and while well, he gets himself into NFL size to survive a season then uh, two offensive linemen Nick Saldivari from Old Dominion uh, whether he can play some tackle guard versatility and then Jared Patterson I think in the fifth round a nice value at guard so really like the way this draft class has come together we were able to balance some of the contracts uh, having Oliver going out Hopkins coming in um, we at, did have an offer for uh, Austin Eckler, which I think is very interesting in, in a vacuum, but something that I think we can kind of balance. Uh, you know, if we hadn't have done the DeAndre Hopkins trade, oh, so he's making it. Oh, who would he move him to? Ten seconds. He's, he's uh, trying to lock. Yikes! Oh, he's what still trying to move on. Mike. Yeah, the, uh, we we lost you there for Kevin. Uh, uh, otherwise, he sounded like a robot. <laughs> you sounded like Sierra Abdullah. I like it. Like he wanted to be anonymous. <laughs> is that, <laughs> yeah, one of those is that he's one FBI. No, FBI you sound like, like you sound like the guy in the uh, Tony like the, the Tigers commercials. The, uh, Tony the Tiger. oh. All right, let's see. Uh, Chiefs going up here. Andre Yashivas. I would not like Ooh. that. I would not like him to go to the Chiefs. I like you. You guys saw that the Cincinnati Bengals got Roshan Johnson and Tajay Spears, by the way. Did you guys see that? Joe Goodberry is just uh, making the Bengals the most fun offense in the league. Really? Tajay yeah. Spears and Roshan Johnson. Did, did he move? pair with Joe did, Mixon? Did he trade Joe, Joe Mixon? Uh, I don't think he traded Joe Mixon. I just think he's, he's loaned up that backfield for life after uh, Joe Mixon. Okay. All right. I mean, they did lose. You know, I've obviously had some IJP Ryan. Uh, they, they lost him and, and didn't replace him with anybody. But yeah, adding in two more running backs is interesting. It's interesting. Did you say that uh, Miami took two tight ends in a row earlier? Yeah, um, I can bring them up here. Miami went with so obviously letting Gesicki walk. They did retain uh, Durham Smythe. They then drafted Brenton Strange from Penn State and Luke Schoonmaker from Michigan. Sandwich in between Blake Freeland tackle from BYU. Let's look around the division a little bit here. Ross uh, representing the Patriots did it, I think he's done a nice job. Uh, so Christian Gonzalez fell to them at fourteen. Uh, when Quentin Johnston was falling, they traded up to get him at uh, the seventh pick of the second round. Wanye Morris, tackle from Oklahoma, late in the third. Carl Brooks, early in the fourth, followed up by Nick Herbig. So two versatile kind of edge rusher players. And then Sean Tucker, late in the fourth. Not a bad class from New England. Our guy Vinny, who was just on with us. Let's see who he takes here. Zach Evans. Just keep Ole slaying. Miss. Just keep hey. slaying. Kevin, nice check your DMs. Oh, we, we got a trade. We got a trade offer. Um, the Jets don't have a lot to work with because they gave up picks to get Aaron Rodgers, but Jackson Smith and Jigbo and Osiris Torrance, I would not care for that. Not like that class. 
Kansas City, Nolan Smith, who they moved up a little bit for, then got Luke Musgrave to fall late to the second, Deuce Vaughn and Andre Yoshivas. Another class I don't like. I'm not happy about them getting that. Let's see what our guy Cole did with Baltimore. I got to bring up um, his trade to Greg. Okay, I'm ready. He wants Gabe Davis for a 2024 third. Mm. Um, I don't Especially think with- I don't think that that's crazy for the value he would get. I think that's the ballpark of what a Gabe Davis trade third w- right. would go for. Um, but I, I think the stacking up this kind of offense. Um, I think is they're pushing for a championship in this year. I do think that a trade like DeAndre Hopkins could complicate uh, whether they extend Gabe Davis. But as we just saw with um, Tremaine Edmonds, you know, some of those situations, the same idea. We basically got the comp pick early for Ed Oliver. When when we got a third and a fifth, we got the comp pick plus a little extra. Um, I, I think that, our worst case scenario is getting uh, a comp pick back for Gabe Davis. Uh, if he were to leave and if we don't trade for DeAndre Hopkins, I think that we could um, extend him anyway. So I think that's a fair value, but I would hold on to Gabe Davis and, and try to push for the championship that obviously we're hoping that they're able to to go for. Now, Thomas, that, if you sweeten that, though, if you sweeten <laughs> it, um, is that what I'm hearing? No, I, I I would. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I guess if it was like a second or something like that, it'd be hard to you, – you'd have to listen. But um, I, I I think that you add a piece like DeAndre Hopkins as an addition to be able to try to win a championship. And I, I think having a guy like Gabe Davis is a big part of that. I also think it's way more likely to, that they retain him long term uh, than – even let him walk, but obviously a, a, a move like a DeAndre Hopkins trade yeah, kind of shakes up everything. Would you take a 2024 second? Um, it, again, the same idea as the Austin Eckler deal. I think in a vacuum, yeah, I, I think that that's the kind of um, reason I say that, that I feel like Gabe Davis would be a perfect complement for Russell Wilson, like sure. I, the type of receiver that would thrive with him. Yeah, I think that he, you know, obviously showing what he did with those downfield throws and having a guy like him on one side and Cortland Sutton on the other, it makes total sense. And I even think in a vacuum, I think it does um, make sense from a value standpoint. But with, again, what we're trying to build here, I, I think I would hold on to him and I would go forward. With now, if if Andre Yosivas was still on the board, I would make a strong play to consider that deal because we would take him here. And I'd probably ask for your 531 um, and see what happens. But uh, – yeah, yeah. If there was a guy like him, I didn't even look to see who else was there. That's the kind of guy that you would look at to do that. I don't think there's anybody else with that kind of upside at receiver. But Yoshivas is is an interesting one that that you would with still have guy. that kind of player. Bryce Ford Wheaton. Bryce Ford Wheaton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I I think would be make a lot of sense for uh, would make a lot of sense for. I got a special guest coming in real quick. Hey. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? She can't hear you because I got the Oh, oh okay. No. They said, how are you doing? How are you? Um, Tired? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ever yeah, make your next too. pick. We are too. Anything you want to say? Who's your favorite Buffalo Bill? Josh Allen. Good, Good choice. Answer. Good job. <laughs> Good choice. I like it. All right. Are you going to bed? Yeah. I love you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> That's the best. Put my microphone back on. <laughs> All right. So, Thomas, who are you? Uh, talk us through your thought process here with your pick coming up here at the end of the fifth. I was hoping to try to make a trade, but that didn't happen. So I have a couple of real big holes. Obviously, edge defender, cornerback. I need somebody to go with Sertan. I think Fahoko there is interesting. Oh, whoa! Wow, we, had, we had a a in a wow. in room <laughs> trade at the last second. Yeah, that was oh. quick. Either. Judge, thank you, sir. Hey, this is just right, who, who are you the, jumping up to take? Put the cherry on top of the draft right here. 
I was going to sit here and watch you guys do the rest of it. Tanner McKee. That <laughs> honestly, um, so I I don't know if I love him, but in the thirtieth pick of the fifth round, right? This far exactly. Into the draft is ridiculous. I mean, that's be, really strong value. He can be a backup, and yeah. if you know Jimmy G goes down again, then maybe he steps in. Who knows? The quarterback. Never know what happens. Thomas, any trades in the works? No, not for this. All right, who are you looking at? Uh, Fahoko. I think he'd be uh, a perfect a edge defender, a uh, guy that's going to step right in for Bradley Chubb and hopefully, you know, kind of fill in the gap. He's a guy that played, what, every year in college and has been pretty steady his yeah. entire way through. So I think he's, he, again, a guy that I, I think in the real draft is going to go earlier than uh, – then this pick, you know, this late at the very end of the third round or the fifth round. Um, I think that's a nice one. All right. So, uh, Judge, you, you move down from mm. uh, 30th to 33rd. Who are you looking at here with your pick coming up? I'll tell you what, I'm still working the boards. If anyone wants to send me a deal, I'm willing to package this other fifth round pick for multiple selections in the sixth and the seventh round. I'm a team in the rebuild. I'm looking to add bodies. I'm looking for darts to throw the board. So if anyone's okay. willing to offer me two sixths, a combination of three picks, which gets me six sevenths and sevenths, I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to deal this pick. I've sent out a couple. Of Chris, I sent you an offer. So I like it. I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, we were able to make that happen, Judge. Yeah, I think we both had uh... four, like four or five people had rejected my offers, and then you sent me that. So <laughs> I'm on the board yes. here, and I'm, I'm I'm willing to make a pick, but. Got Forty uh, seconds um, to go. Forty seconds. I'm yeah. waiting. I'm waiting You're on in the Chris chat. Seth. It's right now. It's it's up to Chris Seth whether he wants to take this deal or not. Steve, are you <laughs> running? Are you doing this through the? Players. Are you doing it through the Bills guys Twitter? Um, I'm just uh, I I just sent him the the t- the trade. I didn't I didn't message him or anything. I'm offering you my yeah, fifth my round pick for two six. Like, I got fifteen seconds here though. I'm trying. Doing the uh, math. If Vinny's gonna... around, I need Vinny to check his DMs. As well. eh, I made the pick. Sorry. I was, man, gotta, the trade was rejected, so it's, it's good. Even what do we got Sorry, here? Man. It wasn't even another in one in like twelve. Picks. I went with one of my favorite later round picks in this draft, Rajon Wright. Um, he's a big, bigger cornerback, and that's sort of what John Gannon looks for in that defense. He's got guys like James Bradbury. He's got guys like Darius Slay. So, you know, a, a more physical, aggressive cornerback, a guy who can do multiple things. I went with Rajon Wright there with my pick in the fifth round. Hey, once you get into this area, now you're getting into where it's, you know, position coaches, you know, pounding the table. It's, you know, mm-hmm. filling needs, you know, hey, what did we not get earlier that we still want to take a stab at? That's what these kind of picks are always going to be. What do we got coming up here next? (laughs) Why is Keenan Isaac still on the board? So... It's weird. I don't know from an average draft position. There's, I think, something kind of weird with their software because he's ranked 401st, but somehow has an average draft position of 16th overall. Maybe like two guys took him. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't really know. Like maybe his, you know, his parents used the app and both drafted. Someone took him first overall. Someone took him at 32. (laughs) Yeah, something, something. So Byron Young still out there. Interesting name. Mohamed Ibrahim running back from Minnesota. Brandon Joseph, safety from, from Notre Dame. Uh, uh, Steve, t- talk a little. Any um, any of these late round tight ends that you're a fan of? That's a spot that I'm kind of looking at for um, coming up. So who's left on the board? You got Cameron, Cameron Latu. Yeah, he's, Latu. he's more of a Dalton Schultz type. So I don't know how much you're going to get from him in line. Jaleel uh, to, Billingsley is more of that yeah. same thing, more of a to, move guy. Yeah, to be honest with you, Payne Durham and Brenton Strange were my were my like sort of uh, 
Uh, they were my my cutting off point after yeah. those guys. The 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 tight end market just doesn't tight end board doesn't really interest me. Braden Willis is a guy who gets a lot of love from a lot of people, mm-hmm. but he's more that Reggie Gilliam type where he's a little bit smaller and on the smaller side. So I don't think the Buffalo Bills are gonna be barking up that tree. Yeah. Uh, and Daniel Barker is a guy who I I haven't looked into him yet, but I've seen him rising up a ton of boards. So he's something that you might want to look into, but I haven't personally looked into him yet. Interesting. I think that you know this late one of the last picks for the Bills. Although obviously, mm-hmm. so happy to see um, that having the chance for Demar Hamlin to be able to play again. You know, bringing back Jordan Poyer and adding Taylor Rapp. When Taylor Rapp was a guy that I was considering as a you know possible replacement for Jordan, Jordan Poyer, and you somehow get both of them, I still think it's possible that they could add a, a safety here. And there's a couple guys there. I think you know. Brandon Joseph, Rashad Torrance, Ronnie Hickman from Ohio State, um, Trey Dean from Florida, Kayvon Merriweather from Iowa, definitely uh, Brandon Hill from Pittsburgh. Uh, definitely some interesting. The safeties left are, are one of the better spots in this uh, third round, thir- day three area. Randy, who are you looking at here with your fifth round pick? Well, uh, I think it's, it's take a little backup from Mike Thomas, you know, coming off some some injuries, and maybe he might not be the guy. That, I'm going to take a moldable ball of clay here, see if I can hit strike some gold. Bryce Ford Wheaton from West Virginia. Very interesting. I like it. I'm not yeah. going to give you a poop emoji. I'll give you a player. And he should to be able to, to acclimate and kind of get his game up. Kevin, we have I mean, there's no sent... reason for him to play immediately. Yeah. Our 628 for two sevenths if we want uh, two picks. The, the 628 um, is 628 to 7-1. That sounds like a guy that doesn't want to stay on for the seventh round. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what that sounds Because he's like. given us a free pick to move back what? Yeah, uh, it's actually a little for there's a lot of comp picks in there. So it's actually moving back about 10, 12 picks to be able to do it. Uh, yeah, I don't mind that. It's, you know, again, the Bills are not the easiest team to get, uh, you know, undrafted free agents to sign with. Uh, so it's another one for us to play with. You want to accept that one? Sure. Give us a couple yeah. sevens. Why not? Take that. Something fun to play with. Jake Hayner. We can finally get our running back now, maybe, too. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, and I mean, that's basically it. You know, when we now have picked 741, which is almost Mr. Irrelevant, it's not quite. <laughs> we're one pick off of Mr. Uh, Irrelevant. Um, wait a second, Judge, you just took Hayner? I did. That's surprising. Yeah, I mean, to me, to me, he's he's a he's a guy that the Cardinals right now their quarterback room is Kyler Murray, it is Colt McCoy, it is Jeff Driscoll, and it is David Blau. So at this point in the draft, I look at a guy like Jake Hayner, where if Kyler Murray isn't ready for Week One, you could conceivably throw I think Jake Hayner out there Week One and play him for six or seven games, give him six seven games of seasoning, and you could groom him to be your quarterback two of the future. A guy who Kyler Murray, a guy who gets dinged a lot has to come off the field a lot. I prefer Dorian Thompson Robinson. I might've taken him if it was me who was the actual general manager, but I think that Jake Hayner could be the, you know, the Gardner Minshew that John Gannon is looking for that guy who can come off the bench when needed. Jake Hayner reminds me a lot of, of Baker Mayfield. And if Baker Mayfield would have been taken later in the draft, I think people would have thought of Baker Mayfield as a steal. So Agreed. that's why I went with with Jake Hayner there. Yeah, I just I thought for sure you were going to take DTR. So uh, I wanted to. Positive. Don't you get me wrong. I wanted to, but uh, and and that is more of an archetype fit for Kyler Murray. But I also um, I do believe that the Arizona Cardinals are going to try to deal Kyler Murray next offseason. I do not think he is in their long term plans. If anybody has Joe Goodbury or know if he's on or Breezy's on, mm, I know. I know. I think Joe was, he might be streaming live. So that might be why he's not responding back. Mm. Um, I think he's live on his YouTube channel. But 
I don't know if he's responding to DMs or not. I'm not sure. Chiefs trade up for somebody here. Carter Warren. I, I like Carter Warren. Yep. I think that's a nice pick, especially in the sixth round. It could be a, another version of Terrell Smith right there. Uh, Carter Warren, I, I think he's an NFL ready pass protector. It's it's the injury concerns and, and getting, you know, acclimated to the running game. That's going to be his, yeah. what's going to get him onto the field. Any other tackles left on the board you guys like? Um, I know last night, uh, Chris Trapesso was a fan of Warren McClendon, a uh, guy coming out of Georgia, obviously standing up for that many starts in the SEC. Um, you know, you got to be able to have a, a decent, um, you know, set up long arms. Uh, not the biggest guy, but, uh, you know, obviously was able to withstand the, the SEC pass rush. I like that Carter Warren pick. They had, uh, I feel like the ranking on this site had him a little low. It, they did. They, I agree. I agree. Are we looking, Greg, are you talking inside or outside? For offensive line? Yeah. Um, and so for Buffalo, I feel pretty good getting Saldivari and Patterson, but um, I don't know if there's a ton of interior guys that still stood out here. Antonio Maffi is probably the one that sticks out the most to me. Mm, okay. Yeah, UCLA. Oh, he may have Never just mind. gone. I was looking at him, and he like dis- Yeah, he disappeared off my screen. So, <laughs> Patriots taking in uh, Antonio Mafia. Of that. There you go. Here's an interesting one: okay. Daniel Scott, Daniel Scott from Kale, who is getting a lot of love as maybe a possible day two pick, like really rising up board. So here on this website, he's not very high, but on a, a lot of other people's boards and a lot of NFL GMs boards, a guy like Daniel Scott could hear his name called earlier. Six foot two, two hundred fifteen pounds, safety tested pretty well. Um, to my knowledge, you guys haven't taken sort of a safety yet. So a guy like Daniel Daniel Scott could be interesting to the um, to the Buffalo Bills. Not connected to the Bills in any way, shape, or form, but yeah, no, I agree. I think safety is a spot that I'm definitely looking at, and it looks at Dan- Shema- Shamari Scott. Connor is available. Yep, Shamari as well. Connor, Ronnie Hickman, Kayvon Merriweather. We know they like Iowa mm-hmm. guys. Obviously, the, Brandon Hill, Pittsburgh. They obviously like a lot of the guys there. That's definitely a spot where I'm where I'm looking here uh, when our pick comes up. I like that. I think the Rams' next three picks are going to be kicker, punter, long snapper. <laughs> Is long snapper even available on this? Uh, um, I don't, I, You might have to search a name of a long snapper, but... Yeah, I I would love to like test that to find out like oh is there a guy there but I don't know the name of a long snapper to test it. <laughs> You'll have Jesus to go to that man. that spreadsheet from uh, that we got that you that you. Oh yeah, there we go. Got. Yeah, there was one long there was one long snapper in there. That's right. Turn right. Michael, the only punter I know is Michael Turk, but we obviously uh, extended uh, Tyler Bass and brought back. That was um, interesting. One of the things that he said in that press conference was like, I'm just happy to have like the same three dudes in the room for the first time yeah. ever. Yeah. Seriously. Michael Turk. Is that the son of, um, it is Matt Turk. Uh, I don't believe it's the son. I think he's the ne- nephew. Nephew. nephew? He's okay. the nephew. Okay. He was Either a, way, that's a, ridiculous. Yeah. He was at ASU for a while. And before he went to Oklahoma, he, um, he went to Oklahoma because he, uh, did not want to give, uh, he went over some COVID issues. He went to, uh, and then it goes Daniel Scott. Uh, he went to Oklahoma. New England Patriots have traded their pick to the New York Giants. I think Joe, Sh- Joe Shane's trying to jump you, even though you're how many picks away? What do you guys feel about Tank Dell over Mims? That was one that I've been been, been asked before, taking Dell over Mims. What do you guys feel? It all depends on think what you're looking for. Like Tank Dell is going to be your sharp route runner. He's a guy who's going to be able to work the slot for you. He's a guy you're going to be you be able to utilize in a number of ways. 
Marvin Mims, I think, would have been more of like a take the top off guy or like, a, you know, a, a guy of that nature. So it depends on like whether you whether you felt like the Buffalo Bills wide receiver room needed that trait or that feature, which, you know, that all depends. A lot of people might say Deontay Hardy and, and Tank Dell were kind of redundant. So, yeah, I, I think in retrospect, I probably would have taken uh, I probably would have taken Marvin Mims over Tank Dell, even though I like Tank Dell more as a player. I'm skeptical of Dell, so I would have taken Mims over over them in that in that case. But I mean, I took Scott over Mims, so I mean, I could have taken Mims. I think it's the upside with Tank too. You're looking, you have the ability to develop him. You don't have to rush him. You're open for the upside there with him and what he's able to do. So I think that's some some of the justification there for a already loaded receiver room. Yeah, I mean it's really it's a it's a flavor type thing, you know, what what you prefer. I mean, a lot of these guys are offer a lot of the same thing, it's just kind of in different minor ways, so I'm a little annoyed. I was trying to get back in to uh to pick up Ryan Hayes and I got sniped like right as my trade offer was being accepted. So Hey, you still got McClendon, which is a pretty solid pick. Yeah. For uh, in exchange for a fifth round pick next year, but uh, I, w- I came in wanting to get two tackles, and now I did. Now I'm done. I think. There you go. Never say never, though. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to catch up on the chat here. I miss like almost all of it. I right, appreciate you guys jumping in. I won't stand for any of your Tank Dell slander. Thank you. Tom. <laughs> oh my god. I can't. I, the the uh, room chat, I wasn't it, it, I don't know if it was something maybe it's not ideal. I'm using Google Chrome. Maybe it's better for Safari or um, I don't know. I wasn't able to get it going. Would Vinny take care? It sticks right in the middle of the screen, and you can't you you got to like close it out to be able to do anything else on the screen. Yeah, yeah that's um. I'm, I mean, I'm running. Them. I can't I can't move the window. I'm running two screens, and I can't move them from one side to the other. To you can't slide it over out of the way or anything. No, not at all. It'd like you constantly you have could, to close. That if you could play. trade players too, because I have to communicate what I'm doing and like the the big framework of a trade. Yeah. yeah, or you have to ask for like a future seventh or something like that when it's really a player to do. That's that's also a feedback I'll give the guys over. I do think it's a cool tool. I, I think that uh, yeah. walk the mock setup and it's a cool tool. I think you know the the bar at the bottom is a little thick. Probably doesn't need to be quite that that big on the screen. Yeah, uh, add in it's a nice format know, on the rosters. But yeah, I think the the format the 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 user interface is actually pretty slick. That's a hell of a name. Habakkuk Baldin elbow. Yeah. Also, don't forget the thing on Tank, too, is he came in for a visit. Mims didn't. I'll take that with a little bit of a bump, too. I, I do yeah. like I, – I do think Mims is a, is a – would have absolutely been a, a very good sure. one there. And I think you're talking like 6-1 way, half dozen the other. I think it's absolutely the, the kind of guy that they would look to bring in. And you see all those comps for Mims to like an Emmanuel Sanders, and you obviously know that's a player they loved and tried to bring in multiple multiple times. But right I after, did, I, it, it, I did look at uh, who New Orleans had in for visits, and two of my picks were directly related to that as well. So there you go. It's a good way yeah, to do it. Doesn't it. matter. Makes sense. Although I know, um, so the Bills confirmed to the Buffalo News today that they had only done their first 27 visits and they had three other visits set for yesterday and none of them got reported. So they used all 30. We don't know who the other three names are. I don't think we knew the 27 to begin with. I think I've seen numbers like 19 and 21 reported. I don't know how many we've seen reported out of who the top 30 are, but they had three more in yesterday and I haven't seen any of the names out there yet. Yeah. Last time I counted, it was like 21. Yeah, I, I thought I remember seeing something like 19 or 21 of the, I think we, the names that were out there. 
think we got up to 24 on our tracker, AJ's tracker. There we go. I, 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 like I said, either way, I don't know anybody who has all 27, and there were three more yesterday. We heard, haven't heard any of those. Names, so it's all, One know. of them just leaked this morning, I saw. I, I can't recall who. Well, if those, if the three new ones aren't, aren't – uh... which one is that, Kevin? I'm going to look I now what I saw. Yeah, I, was say, I wasn't looking today, so I didn't see if anybody did did uh, report that one. Habakkuk Baldonado really is an outstanding name. You're right. You're right. Uh, Thomas is a great name. He has huge hands. I do like they also one of those things for like great name. Yeah. I like that they link to the mock draftable too. I think this is a cool uh, tool that, that you can do to pull the, the player up. The fact that the mock draftables are that they have the basic stat line, you have the basic measurements, but then you can pull up the mock draftable. I think that's a nice. Nice, uh, portion. Judge, how many picks do you have left? Uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, he has I've been trying to deal for picks. more, I've been trying to deal for more, but no one wants to make any moves with me. Yeah. All these teams that are going to cut all of these like sixth and seventh rounders are refusing to move up 40, 50 spots for extra. <laughs> I was just about to say I'll move up, but the time ran out. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, you already rejected one of my proposals, so I didn't. Because I, didn't, I didn't, didn't want to take that proposal. I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. You know, <laughs> I had my I had my eyes set on somebody that uh, you know that I wanted. We had did we did you guys have Titman? He's the one I saw. I was leaked today. Okay. Okay. The three that are unreported are clearly. Drew Sanders, Trenton Simpson, and Jack. <laughs> I have no idea who you're even talking about. I mean, that's that's kind of what I assumed is that those are the three that are going to be last reported or, or unreported. It's those three. Can we look at? Can we take a look at Dom's draft real quick? The Jaguars. Yeah. He got Darnell Washington. Because he yeah, let's we'll see who did he draft, and w- let's see if we can pick out when the gummy hit. <laughs> uh, during the draft, uh, so he opened up with Darnell Washington at one twenty four. Which I, I honestly, when when your existing tight end is Evan Ingram, I think Darnell Washington's like a perfect compliment. So I like that one a lot. Andre Carter, I know a lot of people don't love, but the twenty fifth pick in the third round, getting him late third, I think is nice. JL Skinner, uh, Travius Hodges Tomlinson. I, I can't lie, I'm not familiar with Nick Broker for, from Ole Miss. Uh, and then Dante Dimas uh, from Maryland. So not, not too bad. I think he did a nice job. And Josh, that's a, boom, that's a boomer bust. First two picks, though. Those, those oh are yeah, yeah, big rolls. And their their second was the Calvin Ridley trade, right? Yeah, that's why they don't have a second. Mm-hmm. Can you guys imagine Josh Jacobs and Travis Etienne like on the same team? It's not too bad. It's not too bad <laughs> of a one-two punch. <laughs> Who do we got coming up here? Randy's got a pick here and four more picks. Then we got Chris. Then we got one of our last picks, Kevin. So we got we are on the board. We are officially on the screen uh, with the first pick of the seventh round. Right now, I have a handful of those safeties queued up: Brandon Hill, Jamar Connor, Kayvon Merriweather. I think those are all possibilities. I know we had a couple people calling for us to take Max Duggan, have a cost control backup quarterback. Why don't you go See, take you uh, thirty? Go take thirty-four-year-old Stetson Bennett. There we go. <laughs> you could come okay, in and get I, some investment advice. I don't hate Stewie Bennett in the seventh. I'm not gonna lie. I don't hate that. The fact that I, he's older than Josh is right now is kind of astounding. It's a hilarious. A seventh round Stewie Bennett. Oh my gosh. My plan was to take Clayton Toon in the sixth. Okay. And, the, and then the op- opportunity came to move up and grab uh, Tanner McKee because he fell, like, what, to the fifth? So, Steve, pitch us on why I should take Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Well, I mean, you're looking at a guy who's got all the intangibles, I think, to turn into a Tyler Huntley type of backup. It's a guy who started for five years because of COVID and a Chip Kelly offense. This is a guy who is fairly mobile. He's got a ton of experience playing in the Pac-12. There are some people talking about him possibly having starter potential. 
I think he's more of a, like a career backup type of guy. But if you are looking for a guy who's going to come in, be able to scramble for first downs, has plenty of experience, the moment's not going to be too big for him. You're looking for that cost-effective four-year cost-control backup. I think Dorian Thompson Robbins the perfect fit in the in the back half of the draft. I do think at some point maybe the Bills stop cycling through like these you know other you know uh, you know looking for a stop backup quarterbacks and I, I do think that we kind of get into that mode at some point here where where we start mm-hmm. to draft the cost control backup quarterback. I do think that's in the cards. I don't think it's this season, um, but I do think that maybe next year we start to see that and. We, we start to add a player like that. Randy, who we got? Torian Thompson Robinson. There we go. Oh, it's a surprise. <laughs> it's one of your guys. Yeah, yeah. I wanted, I mean, like I said, I'm stuck with the car for two years. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to get a little bit of, of fresh blood in there. Jameis Winston obviously isn't going to be a long term answer. And, you know, Robinson is a dual threat guy and he's he's got a you know solid character and everything. So, you know, if he becomes a, a sub package or a backup or you know eventually a starter, it's a bonus. I mean, this is a it's a bonus pick anyway, so mine mine as well. Ronnie Bell, I think uh, you know, Aaron Quinn would, also would have my, uh, that pick. Yeah, uh, to me, Ronnie Bell is a guy who's gonna come in, he's gonna be your fourth, fifth receiver. You might even get two contracts out of him. And he's also going to be able to contribute on special teams. So depth receiver, special teams, that's what I'm sort of looking for here. And I know he's not the biggest guy in the world, but still at six foot 190 with DeAndre Hopkins away from the Cardinals, other than Zach Pascal, he's now your biggest receiver in that room when you have a room with guys like Hollywood Brown, Rondale Moore, and um, uh, another one of Aaron Quinn's favorite, Greg Dortch. So there we go. a little bit of size there in Ronnie Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Chris goes with the all-name team. Habakkuk Baldonado. I, I like it. I like it. Um, so one, I want a quick shout out our guy go to Go Time Dolphins, uh, who's representing Miami, saying thanks for the, for having this, having a blast. I, I think everybody's done an awesome job. It's been really, really good. I'm, I'm really pleased with how how everything's come together so far. Um, we had a question in the chat of who is left at edge. So let me see if I can pull that up here. Mm, we've now received another trade offer. What, what are we getting now? Uh, they want to move up. Nah. All right, one more pick here. So let's see. Brenton Cox Jr. Uh, yeah, uh, Lonnie Phelps is there. That's interesting. Lonnie Phelps is there from Kansas. I think that's interesting. Big time special. Big Lonnie Phelps guy. I don't, like Lonnie uh, Phelps. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm a large Lonnie Phelps. Wait, guy. Do you have any picks left, Randy? Is it? I I do have two picks left: seven ten and seven forty. Um. So we got one more pick here, and then we're up, Kevin. So I would. I'd be between Lonnie Phelps and Brandon Hill, one of the safeties. There are three of the safeties left. We are on the clock. Safety is definitely a big need for you. You should probably go that direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm for sure taking Lonnie Phelps now just to, yeah. uh, just, <laughs> just to, just to piss Randy off. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Lonnie Phelps guy. I, I would actually advocate for that here. I, so. No, I, I like it, and there's three Thank of the safeties you. left, and I don't no, really I, feel strong. Yeah, positionally it makes sense. We can grab a safety or running back to end. <laughs> We'll take Lottie Phelps. <laughs> All right. Brandon Hicks. Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> a late round pit DB. He was meant to be a bill. Yeah, correct. Correct. I, Aaron talks about that all the time. Like he absolutely makes sense as a, a future Buffalo Bill. So and what so when our choices are an Iowa safety or a Pittsburgh safety, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Plus, Shamar Connor is still there. Rashad Torrance, I think we're in pretty good shape to get a safety that, you know, guy can come in, compete for a special teams role, compete for a, a roster spot here. And we try to work the phones and do a seven and a seven to come up to get him if you want him the most safety. Yeah, I could go for a seven and seven. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Um, Dom here talking about God. I wish I had every pick 
right <laughs> right before Greg, I would pick up. <laughs> that would be a nice bit. <laughs> yeah, it would sure. be funny. That would be funny. <laughs> I am kind of depending on people doing their own streams and not listening to everything that you're saying. So I, right. It's like you don't want be. to give it away until you're right before, about to pick. <laughs> yeah, that, that is really funny. We have a kicker or, picked. Christopher or better Dunn. yet, you literally just say every single time a different player and then <laughs> draft the actual guy you want. Smoke season. There you go. It is lion season. Yesterday was 420. <laughs> so I like Dillard, Dillard, Dennis a lot, by the way. I think Dennis is a good pick there by the Vikings. <laughs> so uh, Dilly Dilly Dale was asking, we didn't pick one of the safeties. We have one pick left, and there's still four safeties on the board in our queue that we like. So I feel pretty good that we're going to get one of those guys with our one remaining pick. We got Brandon Hill, Shamari Connor, K. Bon Merriweather, Rashad Torrance, all options that we're going to be able to come away with a safety still. Falcons just took back-to-back linebackers for some reason. That's weird. Okay. You know Randy's taking a safety now for sure. Muhammad Diabite and DJ Johnson. Interesting. What's Eric put together for a class here? So he opened up with Bijan Robinson, Derek Hall, Sidney Brown. I really like that opening. Uh, Trey see Palmer. The, uh, offensive tackle from Oregon. Greg, I want to see you try to pronounce his name. Oh, God. Okay. Let me look. Uh, offensive tackle from Oregon. Woo! Malasela Amave Laulu. Obviously, that's easy. Lalu, it's Lalu for sure. <laughs> for the Falcons <laughs> too. Name. For the Falcons too. Uh, Savaka Dennis is, or I'm sorry, Muhammad Diabadi is like sort of an off-ball guy, and DJ Johnson's more of a pass rushing edge, even though he's listed okay. as a linebacker. So both listed that way, but it's not actually mm-hmm. back-to-back linebacker. I haven't paced Junior still there. No, he got taken. No, he was well, ago. quite a ways ago. Yeah, he's long gone. Tit- Titans, I believe, got him. Yeah, so I was just looking to see where. I haven't had a pick since the fifth round, so I'm not paying attention. <laughs> uh, Ivan Pace Jr. Like reading through the, the chat right now. Let's see. He lied. He had a pick in the sixth round. This is a terrible. Uh, Ivan Pace Jr. went five twelve. Oh, you're right. I did. Yeah, the twelfth pick of the fifth round. That's a that was a nice pick. Forgot um, Thomas that I traded a. 2024 fifth rounder to get back in. Chris, you had a really nice draft. Really, really nice draft. Oh no, Chris, Chris puts together a good haul. Yeah, great. Mm-hmm. You know, got to take it with a little grain of salt trading away two two better pieces in in uh uh Caleb Miller Miller and uh Josh Jacobs, but the class he put together is fantastic. So it immediately definitely... replaced Miller with Skaronsky and Jacobs with Charbonnet, and then still added Joy Porter Jr., BJ Ojolari, Tucker Crafts, Yaki Ika, Olu Oluatami. Henry uh, Tuo Tuo, Charlie Jones, Tanner McKee, and Warren McClendon. Really good haul, Chris. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, those guys helped to <clears throat> excuse me to boost the draft capital for sure. But yeah, I think they were. I mean, the you know, I could see Raiders fans kind of going either way on both picks, depending. Maybe even I don't know. The Colton Miller one might be a little more controversial because you know Jacobs is a more obvious trade candidate, but. Um, there was a lot of interest in Colton Miller, so I took advantage. <laughs> in in you know, from the phase that they're in and the rebuild kind of situation that, that they could be looking at here, you know, you cleared out a lot of money as well that you're able to take a look yep. at some more things next year. Um, Charles G asking here about Jeremy Banks. That was a guy that came up last or Wednesday night with Chris Trapasso. So uh Judge or Randy or any of you guys, do you guys any of you guys do any work on Jeremy Banks, the linebacker from Tennessee? Yeah, he's definitely getting a lot of buzz, but there's definitely some off-field concerns with him. I know he's got a ton of sort of off-the-field baggage, things that went on at Tennessee, which sort of is probably dinging his draft stock or or, or dinged his draft stock yeah. as well. Interesting. Detroit, let's see. So this was a late swap right before the draft. Our guy Dion jumped in to be able to draft for the Lions at the very last minute because we had a late late scratch and he ended up with let's see Jalen Carter, Felix uh and the DK Azuma, DJ Turner, Hendon Hooker, AT Perry, uh running back Eric Gray from Oklahoma, Braden Daniels, 
Let's see who Chris Seth took here. Your play. This is your last pick, Chris. We've got Anthony Johnson from Iowa State. I like it. Chris, I just DM'd you real quick, by the way. Yep. Uh, yeah. I Daniels. needed another cornerback after Randy the sniped Moss. <laughs> Our guy here, uh, you boy lettuce. <laughs> like it. Drafting Dell here says if D Hop is just a one year loner, then we have a young wide receiver to step up and don't wind up like the Packers last year with elite quarterback throwing to ham sandwiches. <laughs> I appreciate you, Thomas, but I'm I'm gonna stick, I think. <laughs> Looking right. everywhere. No, I get it. Picks are going fast and furious now. I like it. We are gonna, yeah. This is gonna. We're gonna wrap in like under two and a half hours. I'm gonna be really impressed here. To what Thomas just DM me was trying uh, an offer for Hunter Renfro, and I get it. Me ah. Charlie Jones, but I like the idea of having both of those guys, and maybe Charlie Jones is eventually the heir apparent to that. You know, yeah. to Renfro, and, and Daniels likes those little slot receivers. You know. Yeah. And in fairness, you know, I, I think that Renfro, there was a window where he could have been traded. Now it, you're almost paying the same amount of money, whether you have him or not. So you'd get to have to get bowled over with uh, a trade offer that was just phenomenal to be able to do it. Oh, Stetson Bennett. There he went. <laughs> Vinny. Look at the haul Vinny ended up putting together for the Seahawks. Good work. Will Anderson, Addison, Drew Sanders, Avila, Clark Phillips, Jacqueline Roy, Zach Evans. DeMarco Hellams and Stetson Bennett. Nice. Oh, didn't he trade for Malik Willis too? So he has Malik Willis <laughs> and Stetson Bennett behind Geno Smith. And Geno Smith, yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Um, let's take a, a look here at Thomas's class. Anton Harrison, Trenton Simpson, Joe Titman, Jaden Reed, Moro Jomo, uh, Violimi Fahoko. Very nice. We got yeah. one more still coming. With not a lot to work with, too. Denver had didn't have yeah. capital coming in. Yeah, and you so you traded away Jerry Judy and J.K. Hamler or K.J. Hamler. Um, anybody else? Were those the two guys you moved? Those are the only ones I did have interest for Patrick Sertan, but we turned that down. Yeah, well, yeah, good, from me, good right? Work. <laughs> good work, maybe. Could have been you. Good. Could have been other people too. Good. I never job, made. Not, I never made you an offer, but I, I put good a job interest out. was hot. The, the best, one of the best <laughs> quarterbacks in the NFL. Who is the? Uh, who's the Packers guy? Uh, their corner. No, their their GM. Uh, Bill. I, th I think it's Gutenkust. Bill Mufasa. No, 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 no. no. Uh, on the. Uh... Oh yeah, it's Mufasa. Okay, yeah, I yeah. was actually messaging with him. Oh, they're on the clock. Never mind. It's too late. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Who do you end up putting together here? So he traded. They end up doing the trade for Aaron Rodgers. There goes um, Stetson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Darnell Wright, Keon, uh, Darnell Wright, Keon White, Jertavius Martin, Jonathan Mingo, <laughs> Michael Wilson. He's on dial up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, Randy what, whatever you hear us laughing, what you you said Stetson like a minute after he got picked. It was well, not only that, a minute after he got picked, and that we talked about Stetson. Yeah, right. Stetson been it going. Um, he hasn't heard us talking about him. Being he still doesn't yet, know the though. Week, said it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my 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 brother freezing up. Kevin said he has a delay too, so I think there's been some challenges communication wise. Yeah. Yeah, mine's frozen. Or it's freezing up. Oh, I just saw Asim Richards is one this late into the Ooh. seventh round. That's a really nice pick. I like that one a lot. I didn't even see he was there. Everybody's ready to finish this draft. I think somebody should pick Bumper Pool just because it's a fantastic name. <laughs> it's a fantastic name. It is a great name. It's no Habakkuk, but it's you know it's right up there. It's 140 people watching us do a seventh round. Uh... That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Those fans don't mess around. It's fantastic.
fantastic. I, I will beg one do, more time. Back in. Yeah, please give us a like. Uh, press the like button. It really helps a lot. Uh, make sure you press that like button and leave us a comment afterwards. Uh, let us know who your favorite pick was or which one of us is crazy for passing over a player. Tonight's been a ton of fun. The chat's been awesome. You guys have been great. This has been uh, a lot of fun. A lot of our other Bills fans who jumped in to be able to draft teams did a great job. Um, I, I think Vinny did an awesome job with Seattle. Uh, Dom didn't completely mess up the Jaguars. So. <laughs> and side note uh, for cover one, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we do have coverage for the draft. Yes, Thursday yes. night, we have the Bills guys, uh, obviously Judge and Tilt uh, with some guests that night. The second night, we have Anthony Prohaska, this guy's coverage. And then the final day, Kevin Masseri and Mike Bunt doing Saturday. So make sure you check in, react with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. We, we're going to be doing some uh, live reaction stuff too um, afterwards. After the live coverage goes, we'll have some reaction stuff to the Bills-specific picks. Um, Thomas, your top clock's running out just in case. You know, oh, crap. Get it. Nice. Good catch. But yeah, uh, we have some awesome coverage coming up next week. So a lot of really good stuff to be able to go through. So really pleased about uh, everything that's done. And, and shout out to our guy, Dave Tilton. Uh, he did an awesome job putting together. He's been kind of managing the draft coverage and uh, getting everybody set up who's coming in for which segments and which portions. He's done an awesome job with it. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. He's fine. <laughs> he's fine. Guys. If you like this sort of thing. Greg, you and I are going to be on playback tomorrow night. That's right. I forgot about that. Tomorrow night, we're going to be uh, hanging out for the Bandits game, answering draft questions, watching clips from the movie draft day that Anthony's never seen, and uh, rooting for the Buffalo Bandits. So we get to introduce Anthony Prohaska to Sonny Weaver's brilliance. Yes. <laughs> so, and, you get, and you get Russ Brandon in it, too. Yes, a Russ Brandon appearance. We actually want to, you know, Chris was negotiating with the guys at playback, trying to set it up to literally just do a watch along party of we wanted to watch the, whole the movie, movie uh, the movie draft day but it's, it's something with the rights that we couldn't get done so we just yeah. have some clips to be able to do maybe by you next know, we year were, we'll be able to do that we were yeah. supposed to get that movie that movie was supposed to be about Buffalo, the Buffalo. yeah Correct. yeah that was the initial pitch was that uh was the first one was that it would be about the bills instead of about the browns that would make me mad and they re- <laughs> they're like that's this. We need a team that's even bigger of a pair of losers yeah, right. in the Buffalo that's, Bills. Please that's why Russ out. Brandon got to act like a tough guy because it was a consolation prize for them ditching Buffalo. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I um, yeah. I was looking into like, or I remember back when that movie came out too. There was the, uh, there was uh, like the the Bills offered the Browns a trade for the number one pick, and it was like tantamount to like C.J. Spiller. Uh, like the first round pick this year, like the first round pick next year, or something like that. It was, I, I don't remember the details of it now, but back then, that's what like the, that was actually, some of what the, the storyline was going to be. People actually went in and was like, if this was real life, this is what the Bills were offering the Browns for pick number one. We tried to trade him for, did we try to trade him for the running back, right? In the movie, no, yeah. we tried. Oh, is that what we tried to? I yeah, we tried to move up. Yeah, it looks like Tarzan plays like Jane is, uh, is the famous line for, for, from yes. Sonny Weaver there. And what's funny is they're they're yeah. like trying to trade a running back, and then Cleveland ends up taking a running back in the first round. Well, Jennings, he's ro- Cleveland royalty, clearly. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. obviously. Uh, what was it? Uh, right. Wait, hold on. Jennings I'm on the was clock. played by. Uh, it was um, an actual running back. Who the guy the who does the guy. Aaron macro Foster. dosing? Aaron Foster. Aaron Foster. Aaron Foster. Yeah. yeah. Bills pick. All right. Did one of our hey our one of our guys made it so. Uh, we don't need to go with bumper pool, Kevin. Who do you like better, <laughs> Pittsburgh yeah. safety Brandon Hill or Virginia Tech safety Shamari Connor? I like Brandon Hill. Yeah, I was actually. <laughs> like Chris Seth was saying he he was uh, born to be a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, uh, good pick there. At the end of the draft. Yeah, I really like how this uh, class came together. Very pleased. By the way, I might show up tomorrow night for the Bandits game wearing my Rochester okay. Nighthawks jersey. Oh. <laughs> So last, <laughs> the last time the, the Bandits and the Toronto Rock played, they couldn't finish the game because the teams wouldn't stop fighting. Like it went on for like 10 minutes. That's, that's it's crazy. Awesome. That's so fantastic. That's exactly how that's supposed to work. <laughs> is the game in Buffalo tomorrow? Uh, I, think, I think it is. Yeah, it is. All right, guys. This has been a ton of fun. 
Let's uh, go around the clock here. Uh, just kind of getting some final thoughts from everybody. Oh, wait, let's see who Mr. Relevant is. Mitchell Tinsley, from wide receiver from Penn State. Good for him. Uh, so the fact that we wrap this up in two hours and 20 minutes is hey. a world record. <laughs> so fantastic i can't believe that that's how quickly that went uh so so final thoughts uh thomas anything from you on on your team and on uh what to look forward to i know you already gave a shout out for the coverage next week anything final from you uh yeah i mean i i like what what happened for denver uh i think it all hinges on uh mr unlimited uh being able to put it all together and actually be the quarterback he was in seattle um other than that no yeah guys uh, make sure you check in to cover one's coverage going forward this week uh, a lot of good stuff and uh tomorrow uh chris you've got a nice little show going on yeah. chris uh go ahead yeah so uh actually after under review which is joe derosa's new show um that's at 11 and as soon as it's over around 12 15 12 30 um, we're going live with a special on uh, draft day pick trades, which uh, I don't know if you guys knew, but since the McBean, the beginning of the McBean era, Buffalo has been executing more than twice as many uh, pick swaps than through than they did during the drought years. Um, and so we're going to kind of go through a brief recap of that history, and then also look at some actual, like some realistic scenarios to watch out for on days one two and three um and then we might end it up end it with another mock draft but not you know a quicker one (laughs) (laughs) but yeah this has been this has been a lot of fun greg i know it was a ton of work for you to set it up so i really appreciate all of that um and yeah i mean you know i think that uh as i don't know if you want to throw thomas's draft up again um or like throw you know these guys, these other guys drafts up as they as they talk. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, good job, everybody. And I, I will say uh, you did a really nice job, Chris. That this uh, that your class came together was fantastic. It would have been it would have been kind of pathetic if I messed it up. Considering yeah, with as many picks, picks as what they have, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard hard not to at least come away with something there. All right, fantastic producer Chris Seth. Uh, uh, any any final thoughts for the people? Oh no, this was a lot of. Fun. Fun. Um, thanks for inviting me. Let me join you all, big boys. That was a that was a good time. And awesome and nice work with Washington. Good picks and yeah, that was fun. And uh, I am ready for draft season to be over. Oh God, I've already lost my patience more yep. than once. <laughs> St- Steve, how about you? Uh, I'm I'm pretty good, happy with my haul. I think I laid a good foundation there in Arizona to build off of with. Tyree Wilson along the defensive line, John Michael Schmitz at the pivot at center, and, yeah, and Matthew Berger on a right tackle, plus a bunch of other players with how bad Arizona's roster is can play right away, get reps right away, maybe develop a little faster, and maybe you know they hit on two or three of these guys. So uh, I, I really like the haul. I would have loved liked to have been more active in the trade market, trading back from three. Yeah. I don't think anyone gave me a, a realistic offer. I think some people were maybe a little too homerish in their uh in their in their mindset not offering enough to get up to number three if you want a quarterback you're gonna have to pay for it on draft day you're not gonna get it for free so i i just refused to budge uh, <laughs> when it came to it and and those guys got their quarterbacks but i don't think that that is is based in reality yeah. i think on draft I do day think that, that, they're gonna that, be quite that upset will be moved. yeah i think that pick will be moved um and then i i also tried towards the end of the draft to, to trade like fifth round picks for multiple six sevenths and and nobody was biting for the most part. So uh, I was a little upset about that because I would have, I added 10 guys. I would have loved to add 15. That's how bad this Arizona roster is. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think I, I think I did my part in, in, in laying the foundation for an Arizona rebuild. I like it. Uh, Randy, uh, how about you join us here late in uh, the hall you put together for the saints? Well, I think the saints did a good job of, of, <laughs> you know, adding a lot of pieces uh, that they needed, uh, you know, fortifying that defensive line and adding some more weapons for their new franchise quarterback and Derek Carr. So I feel like you came away, if you include Ed Oliver, you came away with at least three starters plus, you know, three or four different supplemental pieces that are going to be worked in in rotations and be able to contribute as rookies. So I feel pretty good about it. I didn't give up a ton. Um, I did get a trade late with the Rams that got me back that third and a fifth to kind of help recoup what I gave up for Ed. So, I mean, I feel like if you're a if you're a Saints fan and you see this draft, I don't think there's a whole lot to be upset about. Losing the first next year does kind of hurt, but I feel like the return on investment with the two guys that you've got for it is is worth it. 
I like it. And with that division, you're you're taking a shot to be able to make sure that that picks a playoff. Absolutely. Yeah. No. I mean, this is this is a win the division this year, definitely uh, type of draft. And you know, I mean, you got Carolina starting a rookie. You got Tampa Bay with also Rands and and Atlanta with Desmond Ritter. I mean, it's this is a good time to make a move. I love it. All right, and to help close us out, Kevin, how do you think we did with the Buffalo Bills? I thought we did good. We're going to get you know a little flack maybe for a middle there, but I thought we did good getting getting rid of Ed, Ed Oliver. We got came up for Campbell, didn't give away too much. Uh, you know, Brissy is a guy that I think is one of the best defensive tackle prospects in this draft. Has high upside. I know he's coming off that ACL, but if we can develop him, and I believe in Sean McDermott to be able to do so, he could be a game changer. And that's what you're looking for at 27. I thought we got got really good to Patterson, Phelps, Hill later on in the draft to put some of those young picks into the into the pool. But you should be pretty happy coming away with Campbell putting Dell into the pipeline. Hopkins is part of this this draft class now, and Brissy. I, I mean, I think they they. I'd be pretty happy with this. Yeah, absolutely. So I appreciate everybody's help. This was a ton of fun. Uh, it was stressful putting together, but it went awesome. But the, the fact that we got this done in the time that we did with as many realistic trades and picks is what we did. I think no one no one took a, a punter in the first round. Nobody did anything you know, wacky. Everybody was making logical, smart picks and really representing their team really well. So I think this is a really good look. We saw some of the guys go how far down um, some of those picks fall. Uh, you know, it was interesting to see. And, and we'll see if some of those line up on draft night, uh, if we made any good calls here of, of who fell, how far. Uh, so I think it was a lot of fun to be able to, to take a look at it that way. So I uh, appreciate everybody here across the board. We've got Thomas Salas, uh, Chris Kepner, Chris Seth, uh, Steve, Steve Mathis, Kevin Massar, Randy Hardman. I am here for Greg Thompson and Cover One. You have been checking us out all night. We appreciate you guys. The chat was awesome. But we are out. <laughs>